And with that, I believe we're once and once again, blah, 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 blah. With that, I will find my tongue tied around my teeth. Welcome to another episode, one of their session of Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. The Great Confusion continues. When it ends, I have no idea. <laughs> Perhaps it ends in uh, not confusion. I don't know. We shall see. I am Mark, the Encaffeinated One. I am the host, GM, and world builder. With me, I have my players from left to right, starting with Silas. Uh, my name is Pat. I am playing Silas Marsh, a uh, secret reptile alien. <laughs> Not quite so secret anymore. Hi, my name is Mahi, and I am the most human. <laughs> it cut out in just all the great ways for me, so I heard, I am, pause, the most human, pause. <laughs> so, Perfect. Uh, we'll hopefully have Annie's uh, full voice here as we go along. We've got to be a little bit of Wi-Fi issues. And and finally. I'm next. I'm next, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric, who might have a few uh, loading moments as I open the door for the cat and wait until she decides to go in or out, then get uh, cats. <laughs> need to have a, a pause screen for you, which is just sort of a cat pawing at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So... Um, Hopefully you had a chance to see the previous episode. If you have not, you can always watch the previous episodes on youtube.com slash ENCIF1. Or we, if you're watching it there now, then you can watch us uh, live on Sunday afternoons at 3 o'clock Atlantic time. Briefly in the previous session, the group spent more time with Dudek and the fantastic orrery of Argenti Sagax, discovering some shocking details about the history of the world and the unstable relationship it has with the higher planes. At the end of that, you went back through the passageway from the island uh, to the, uh, the uh, temporary museum that was set up, Museum of Curiosities, which is on the, on the wharf in an unused uh, warehouse. As you passed through, uh, you felt some magic give force. Uh, only Annie, however, seems to have had any issues. But now, Annie, you realize that whatever information about the location of the library has been suppressed in your mind. And Dudek explains that precautions had to be taken, uh, but uh, perhaps in time they can restore that, uh, that issue. You all return back to the... Uh, seaside city of Ilthfodder. It's late at night. You spent quite a few hours at the uh, old library, the Lithman Archive, as some of you might remember, uh, and now have, with your bounty, come back through the door. And I believe you were just going to be heading for some sleep for the night. Relaxation after a long day of fighting and information and all kinds of weird stuff. Am I correct there? Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Uh, each of you make your way back to your respective homes. Medric, the temple, fire always burning. There are now a few attendants there who have helped out on a volunteer basis. No one permanently yet there uh, to tend all the fires, but a number of the, the people who've respected what you've done and were attracted to the, to the, uh, the flame keepers before uh, have, have helped. So you come back to a familiar and warm uh, establishment. Uh, Annie, you enter back into the Three Bells. It's quite quiet at this time of night. Uh, 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 Sydney is still running front of house, uh, but she's wearing her heavy apron. And you can see dots of flour still in her hair from the earlier baking she was doing, but greets you warmly. Uh, there's only a few uh, familiar long-term residents, if you will, of the main house kind of sitting by the fire. And Silas, you make your way up the long path, up and around the uh, long cape of uh, uh, that stands outstretched, uh, the long promontory that stands outstretched at the upper edge of the bay. And you can see off in the distance, kind of high up on the hill from the where the, the Marsh clan has made its home on the far side of this promontory, you can see many, many lights are active on the far top of the hill where the Baron's uh, residence is. Even at this part of, late at night, not just lights that would be commonplace, 
the familiar orangish glow of firelight and, and uh, lamplight and torch. But in fact, numerous other lights that seem to spread it into the sky, bright sheens of yellow and green and blue and purple, um, sometimes together, sometimes in streaks all alone. It's a strange sight and something you vaguely remember seeing something similar to before. Mm. Although Silas is also enjoying the fact that he can see absolutely perfectly right now. It's true. The The addition and the strength of your, your vision is, is much, uh, much uh, enhanced, as well as this extra sensory perception you have now. Yeah, that whenever part's your, weird. Whenever your tongue happens to dart out of your mouth, sometimes unconsciously uh, flicking ahead, but you can taste every sensation. And as you get closer and closer to the village, the sensations that are that have been familiar to you, the the, the uh, smell of the uh, ocean brine, the um, the uh, the sort of resting of the fish, if you will, that are drying in, in the uh, houses out uh, nearby, all of that comes rushing to you, even from quite a distance. Familiar and comforting uh, tastes and smells, but so amplified as to almost be distracting. He's trying to, you. he's trying to get a hold of uh, control over his tongue as he's going. He's going to be practicing the uh, the spoken poem thing that he's going to be doing later and trying not to mess it up. So he'll just be okay. practicing. Give me a performance check just to see how that's going. <laughs> yeah, that's a ten. So it's still somewhat tricky, and you find yourself un, uh, sort of uh, lisping a little bit more, and, and every once in a while end up kind of biting down on the tongue when you don't intend to. It It's weird because it it doesn't coil in your mouth. Even though as long as it is, you might think that when you retract your tongue, it would be too long and too, uh, too obnoxious. But you feel as though it sort of draws back into you, somewhere deep within the, your throat beneath where your jawline is, is, where it seems to live. That too feels a little bit un, uh, uncomfortable at first, but you quickly become used to that. And you think with just a little bit more practice, you'll be able to uh, to master this new appendage. That's not creepy at all. Um, most of the village by this point has already retired for the evening. You notice that there are a couple of people that have started to stand watch Nothing particularly uh, uh, alarming about that. Mostly just sort of keeping watch on on the, the few sh boats you can see out to, to the to the shore, uh, and seem to be patrolling the town with a a lamp in hand. They greet you warmly and familiarly. You return yep. home for the evening. Nikki is already asleep. Your parents are waiting, uh, just kind of having tended to him for the evening. But they. They look like they could use a rest as well, and they're happy to see you've returned. Yep. I'll let them get to sleep, and then I'll go to sleep after. You all hop, hop into your beds for the evening, have a decent rest. No strange dreams plague you this evening, which is good. <laughs> but there's yep. also a sense of a little bit of concern. Because you do know that one of the primary ways that Catherine was able to visit you and, and inform you of what was needed to be done was through dreams. And while you rest easily and find yourself refreshed for the morning, you can't help but wonder if there's any concern to be had there, given that you haven't heard from Catherine since that incident in that strange otherworldly space. But you arise and uh, how early do each of you get up? Starting with uh, Annie. Is Annie sleeping in this morning? Um, a little bit, but not too much. Like, we got home later than we usually do, but she still has shit to get done. Okay. And uh, um, She did last night also stay up and write a quick note to her parents, which I am currently in the process of writing. Okay to have couriered the next day or something or to send off through your your back channels essentially yeah yeah okay let me know when you've got that and i can put it in the pipeline for for review <laughs> it'll take a while to get there obviously 
Uh, how about Medric? What was Medric's morning like? Same as usual, just get up with the sun and do the ceremony. It's a brilliant uh, morning as you see streaks of red and gold across the horizon, just on the edge of the water. Uh, make a perception check. Dice roller. What's my perception again? I swear, I swear I'll remember this at some point. <laughs> Can you perceive your perception? 23. 23, wow. As you see the sun uh, crest over the horizon and feel the familiar warmth of the sun's rays, you can't help but notice that it, it seems to stretch even further over the edge of the water, almost as though the, the sun's rays are eagerly reaching over the horizon and trying to even tamp down the image of the water, and the edge of the water seems lost in the brilliant rays. Cool. And for Silas, what is your morning like? Uh, is this the morning of the performance, or is this still before That's still that? a couple of days away. Okay. Um, he'd probably get up a little late, but Fisherman Village late, which means like 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after the sunrise, but not yet before anyone is normally considered awake. In the sound. Yeah, like they'd all be getting ready and on the boats and whatnot, but uh, since he doesn't do that, he'd be sleeping in a bit late. Um, when you awaken and you hear the familiar sounds of people out on the boats and out uh, getting ready, uh, you happen to notice that down by the docks, that statue that was being worked on is partially installed which is to say that a, a platform has been built down down there so that it will face the water. And it is uh, placed on that platform, but it looks like it has not yet been fully secured. And there are um, coverings over top of it. Tarp have been placed over top of it. So it's still itself obscured. The thing that strikes you is it's larger than you remember it being. It must stand nearly 12 feet tall at this point as an icon, bigger statue than you remember the, the young man working on, and uh, nonetheless uh, seems to be uh, ready to, to be installed. Yeah, well, my tongue used to be about four inches long, so sometimes things change. <laughs> Do you make a point of showing that to anyone, or, or are you trying to hide it from anyone? Um, he will show it to Nikki. <laughs> Okay. Nikki will probably be highly entertained by it. Um, highly entertained, but also grabbing toward it for it. Uh-huh. I'll teach him not to pull animals' tails uh, or people's tongues. Let's just see here. Pretty successful grab, actually, uh, at it for mm -hmm. the first time. Um, but it quickly eludes his grasp, and you find that, that uh, even with the, uh, you know, granted, Nikki's grasp is not exactly a vice grip, but even with it being held like that, you feel like uh, there's a certain mucus or surface on the on the tongue itself, which allows it to be easily retracted. That's icky. <laughs> no, Nikki just sort of laughs and down. holds his hands up. Um, okay, let's get you cleaned up. Let's get you cleaned up. <laughs> Nikki just laughs. He he probably won't show it to anyone else yet. Uh, he'll tell Nikki this is a secret. Um, he'll probably tell his parents once he gets back later today or something. Okay. So what are your plans for today? I'm assuming at some point you'll catch up with each other, which makes my job a little bit easier. <laughs> Yeah, Silas would be heading into town. Uh, he's got to do some advertising and such and see the others. Okay. Uh, he will. The um, the books and scrolls that he has, he'll uh, conceal in his room for now. Uh, but he'll bring one of the more basic ones with him to just read while he's waiting around places. Okay. Had a, a 
cat invasion. Uh, as you walk back into town, Silas, you notice as you have the, the last several um, days when you journeyed back into town in the early morning that uh, the festival has continued to run very late for people just about every day. And once again, there's a, a number of people who probably partied a little bit too much the previous night uh, and find themselves uh, slumping indoors or uh, in doorways or otherwise uh, kind of falling where they ended up for the night. Uh, nobody seems to be grievously injured, but it does give you this sort of weird flashback almost to the assault on Eilthbot or the Chapin before. Um, this one, of course, uh, not as dangerous or terrible, but just this sort of weird um, similarity of carnage almost from the uh, the ongoing festivities. It's the good kind of carnage this time, though. Kind of, yeah. People may be uh, waking up uh, feeling a bit sore, but it's all self-inflicted um, from having too much to drink the nights before. So Dragon Con carnage, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly. <laughs> it's Dragon Con on 8 o'clock in the morning on the second night. Um, Silas will scratch the kitty that's waiting outside of, uh, of Medric's temple. <laughs> uh, it warms to the touch. Maybe a bit too warm, even? Uh, but uh, you find Medric inside, uh, probably having finished the morning's rituals, uh, and... Well, what would Medric be doing, actually, at this point? Early in the morning, but after rituals? Uh, just, I don't know, talking to people in the, inside the temple, if there are any. Okay. The, the volunteers. It's like, has anything happened in the past while I was gone? Just catching up on everything. All right. Um, make a I'll religion roll. In the doorway. Okay. Religion. Oh, that's only a plus two. Bah. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Yeah, you're not sure whether it was the uh, festivities the night before or just the early morning that many of these uh, these new acolytes are, are somewhat getting used to. But you feel like they're trying to pay attention, but not mm -hmm. really hearing you all that much. Uh, nothing seems to have changed in the temple. In fact, when you mention sort of what has changed... Uh, at least one of them kind of goes a little bit wide-eyed and realize they didn't do any of the changes or any of the cleaning or any of the organizing they meant to do yesterday uh, and kind of uh, quickly uh, grows more embarrassed. Um, but otherwise, they're they're kind of bleary-eyed and they're nodding. And you so they were remember. probably partying and it's like, well, yeah, I probably would have done the same thing in their situation, but one day won't hurt, but let's try to get it done next time. I won't say that verbally, but like... Okay. I'll just reiterate. It's like, yeah, just make sure you get to it today. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, th there's a lot of confusion. There are volunteers as, after all. So. As, as you try to explain some of the seriousness of some of these important rituals, like the one you did in the morning, and they're yawning so hard, they, they basically <laughs> are, are kind of, yeah, 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 uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, this will be a discussion for tomorrow them and tomorrow me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just do grab see the room and incinerate it in front of them. <laughs> You do see Silas arrive at the front door. Hey, Silas. Hey. So, how was your night? Did uh, your friends and family take through the changes fairly well? Um, Mom and Dad don't know yet. Nikki thought it was lots of fun, though. That's good to hear, I guess. Yeah... Oh, I'll I'll let them know tonight. Well, best of luck with that. Uh, were you on your way to the three bells? Yep. All right, yeah. let me grab my stuff and I'll be right over. And Medric, you noticed that while you know what the changes were, Silas, from a distance, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell the differences. Yeah. Um, his eyes are, are, are you know, hidden enough uh, in, in a sort of normal... Uh, normal shadow of day, and uh, while every once in a while, because you know to look for it, you can see the little forked tongue kind of pop out around his lips. You can see him making an effort to keep it concealed. Also, uh, disguised self is on again. Okay. Okay. He can do that perpetually, so he'll use it to cover up some. 
Yeah, it's still an illusion, so people could still see through it, but um, uh, it does make it uh, effective. No one seems to react to you as uh, out of shock, at least. You gather your things, Medric, Silas, yep. you make your way to the three bells. Hey, how does my skin feel? Um, it was feeling a little separate last time. <laughs> Or are you it asking feels... that to the DM or to Medric? <laughs> <laughs> are you asking me to like pet you on the shoulder or something? Or... <laughs> no, this is just Pat asking Mark if Silas has noticed anything get a little more normal or not. It may Maybe have been shedding. the illusion of the of the changes the night before, or the 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 in process feeling of it. Uh, it does feel as though you've sort of settled within your own skin. Uh, it doesn't feel loose or shifting, but it does feel softer. Weirdly enough, um, and it, mm. maybe a little muted sensation, but not much. Huh. Well, Silas will mention that to Medric to say, "Yeah, my yeah." Uh, the skin thing seems to be mostly gone. You do kind uh, of but notice the that you don't. The eyes have, are still here. You don't have any hair on your arms at all now. How much you had before, I don't know, but. Mm. You do notice that, that they are smooth. Well, I thought maybe you might have been shedding, you know, like like a snake. I know. I, is, I that, mean, is that going to happen? I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I admit that thought passed through my mind as well. Like, uh, uh, but, I, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, my face <laughs> seems to still be on now, so. I, I can confirm. I just got to watch out for the, 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 the. All right. Uh, the, the disguise self is probably largely just his eyes. Uh, that would be probably it. He wouldn't need it for the rest of them. And as we're having this conversation, I'm assuming we're like walking towards the three bells. Sure. Okay. Uh, we should probably check in on Catherine. I haven't had any dreams from her in a while. I don't know. If yeah. You know. I mean, do I do that now, or do we want to wait until after the party thing? Because the party thing is kind of a big thing, too. Yeah. Well, we'll just see what Annie thinks, if there's anything going on today. And question to the DM, is the party today? Uh, no, the party is after the performance. Okay. And the performance is today? Days. No, the performance, I think, is a few days off still. Okay. Yep. So if we have any free time, we might as well, but if not, then... After the party is fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, Annie, you come down to the common room, I'm assuming? Yeah. The few patrons that were there last we were... night. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I'd be working on a cross-stitch, um, not, not cross-stitch, embroidery. Fine. Something that I need to do. Okay. Ding and sewing, you know. <laughs> A little little taste of youth, perhaps. Um, as you come down, you notice that most of the patrons who were there last night um, have either left or two of them are still kind of sleeping in the corner. Two old uh, old uh, human men who. Uh, do occasionally sing badly al along with whatever performer happens to be there the night before uh, now kind of have this uh, humorous uh, shoulder to shoulder Ow. kind of sleeping pose um, that they probably didn't intend, but which is not entirely unfamiliar. Uh, a young boy who you don't uh, recognize um, comes over to your table uh, and sort of asks you, is there anything you want? Um, Young boy with short black hair and pale white skin, little smudges of dirt and grime here and there. You don't you don't recognize him, but he's acting as though he works there. Annie is frozen. Oh no, no, me not. Annie's not responding. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were something frozen. here. Ah. He seems to be somewhat imp impatient and then kind of like, well, if you're not going to order anything, I'm going to go away. 
sorry, my my internet froze and I was trying to uh, he he's trying to work uh, to get my order. Yep. Uh, I'll I'll just order whatever they're serving for breakfast. Fine. He goes off and kind of slumps towards the kitchen. Nobody's out front with the uh, the bar that normally is the greeting area as well as the bar and normally where you would order your food. Uh, but he slumps off towards the back kitchen. Uh, the door opens and Silas and Medrick come through. You see Annie sitting on the far end uh, as she normally is, although I don't know if uh, embroidery is a typical discovery <laughs> for for them, uh, for you, Annie. Seems no, fancy, she's... seems like royal. <laughs> It's one of those things that she's been stressed, so she does want to calm herself down. Okay. Hey, Annie. That that looks fancy. Oh, actually quite bad, but... Well, I think it looks pretty nice. Yeah, that... Whatever it is. <laughs> Is it the kind of thing figures. where where you kind of say that is a beautiful looking fish, and she says it's a horse. <laughs> it, yeah, I just it's, figured it's like it's one of those like... roll <laughs> a ten. Oh yeah, that's it's a ten. It, it, it's okay. <laughs> Midrick just figures it's something like that, like people in royalty kind of do because. Why else would oh, I do it? <laughs> it definitely is. It definitely is. Okay. <laughs> well, you sit down. Corner and... After so a moment, the, the, the... Sorry. <laughs> the internet is not with us tonight. <laughs> well, uh, Silas goes over to the bar and looks over the edge and tries to find one of the ladies that, that works here. Uh, you look behind the bar, and all you see is the uh, the basically the the boxes that uh, Sandy normally stands on to stand up behind the bar, uh, being a, a, a halfling, not terribly tall. No sign of anybody there. It's not like she's hiding behind the bar or anything. He knocks on the bar, doing a uh, shave and a haircut, two bits. <laughs> uh, you hear uh, a voice from inside the kitchen yell out. I'll be there right in a moment. It's a familiar voice of, of probably Sydney, who's normally doing the baking. But out through the door, carrying a, a tray uh, laden with what looks like hot porridge in a bowl, um, a, a, an apple, and a few other things, is a, a young boy uh, who looks thoroughly unimpressed with uh, the, the entire everything. Uh, and kind of looks up at you and Kirk's an eye, uh, eyebrow. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. And kind of walks over to Annie's table and plunks that down. Ah, oh, there's more of you. He sees uh, Medrick there. What do you want? Breakfast. Fine. <laughs> and he turns around and starts walking back towards the kitchen. Suppose you want breakfast too, mister, he says to Silas. Nah, I've already eaten. That's fine. Oh. You want a beer then or something? I'm good. All right. And kind of goes back into the kitchen. I'll ask Annie. So, uh, who's that guy? I don't know. Kid who we sent to get Gaetano that one time. It's actually not the same kid. It looks like somebody you have not seen before. I don't know. It's a different kid. Silas, do you go over and join them at the table or? No, he's waiting at the bar for uh, the lady to come out. Okay. Um, the uh, the two old gentlemen, one of them wakes up and kind of uh, brushes off a bit of accumulated spittle from the night, kind of shoves his companion over to just sort of snorts and, and falls over to lie on the bench. Well, time to get going with the day. He stretches and kind of belches loudly. And it makes his way towards the front door and heads out. After a second or two, the boy reappears with a tray much like the first one, um, with another bowl of of, of porridge, uh, most of an apple. Looks like it's been cut already and 
to small pieces uh, and it sort of plops it down in front of you medric there thanks uh, so i've been working stand, here for a while or stands there expectantly with his hand out no doesn't really say okay. anything uh he, that'll be four copper each all right and with small things like that, don't worry about specific numbers. Yeah. But you all have, have at least a small, a small money in, in hand. He gathers the money, and you can see him kind of pick the money up, looks at it, tries one of the coins with his teeth. All right. He seems a little disappointed that you paid probably exactly the amount he asked for. I mean, well, yeah. I, I his customer service skills needs work. Need <laughs> Because so I, I have a tab going, so I, I just pay him. I'm like, whatever. Like, do you, the feedback do you make will a, make its way to management. <laughs> do you make a, a point about the tab, Annie? I'm like, I have, I have a tab going. I'm in one of the rooms here. I've been here for a few weeks now. Like, He eyes you a little suspiciously. I kind of need skill. Sure. Whatever. What's your name? He's asking Annie specifically. Yep, yeah, I, I, I say Annie. Oh, sorry. Again, I'm, I'm losing words every once in a while. Yeah. So if I do ask you to repeat something, please understand that's why. Sounds um, good. <laughs> Annie, okay, fine, whatever. He takes Medrick's coin, kind of moves back. As he passes you, Silas, you sure you don't want anything? I'm good. Sit yourself. He goes back inside the kitchen. Nobody else comes out. So I wonder why uh, Sydney or Saffron or Sandy ordered or hired that kid. Yeah. I don't know. Mark. I'm not sure. Right, how long has Sandy been missing? It's been since the start of the thing. Um, Wait, there's one missing? Of... Yeah. She was hanging out with uh, with the doc and never came oh, back right. to work. Oh, oh. Um, and as you think back, it has been a couple of days. Uh, and the last time you specifically saw her, yeah, uh, her and Doc Marigold were checking out some things around the town, the new festivities. Quite happily so. Um, well, Silas will walk into the back. Okay. Uh, the door is basically one that swings in both directions. And it's easily pushed. Uh, obviously meant to be uh, something you can do while you're carrying a burden of, of plates or food. Um, as soon as you come through the, the door, you're kind of hit with a wave of steam and uh, a little bit of, of smoke as the baking for the day has been uh, going on uh, probably since daybreak or even earlier. Uh, you're also hit with... Uh, a sort of wave of heat. Uh, it's several degrees warmer in this particular space. You see multiple pots uh, kind of uh, uh, piled up. One of them clearly the pot that the, the uh, morning uh, uh, porridge was made in. Other things that seem to be stewing for the rest of the day. You also notice that there are uh, plates and bowls and things kind of stacked up that haven't been uh, cleaned just yet. Uh, you see uh, one of the, the trio, presumably Sydney. Again, wearing an, an apron, um, kind of hair a bit messed up, uh, kind of running back and forth between different things over on the side. The young boy is kind of, uh, kind of slouching up against one of the walls, kind of uh, looking at his, his fingernails and kind of trying to dig the dirt out from underneath them. Um, doesn't take notice of you. The, uh, the, uh, Sydney doesn't seem to take notice of you right away. Uh, just kind of uh, still working. And then when she does look up, oh... Sorry. Hey, Sydney. Where's the other two? Well, um, Saffron is busy in the back, checking on the brews. Uh, we should have a new brew coming up very shortly. Something special for the festival. Sandy, that scamp, is still out there with Dr. Marigold, I, I assume. Really, it's hmm. quite irresponsible. Yeah. 
Might have to take a look for her at some point. We even had to hire, hire extra help. Caden in there, over there, isn't much use. I heard that. It's true. Okay, well, at least you got uh, Saffron still here. Okay, no, I just wanted to check. I'll leave you to your work then. Well, if you do happen to see Dr. Marigold or my sister, tell her to get her butt back here right away. This place doesn't work without all three of us here. Hmm. Sure, uh, Silas will head out. And actually, Silas will go hit the bathroom because uh, Pat sadly has to. I was hoping he wouldn't <laughs> have to, but uh, really need to go right now. All right, no problem. I'll uh, be back in a couple of minutes. So he passes quickly through the uh, the main room. You can see that urgency of the morning uh, hitting him. We, we see him walk in there and then walk out for the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, what are Annie and Medrick discussing over your uh, your breakfast? The, the the porridge is very thick to the point where you felt if it cooled, it, the, the spoon would never be retrievable again. <laughs> um. I'd be eating most, and... Most likely above. What? You go ahead. I was going to say, I was, I, I, Medrick would probably, would probably bring up Catherine and ask if Annie had any, any dreams about Catherine at all. I've not. Uh, I think that we should probably... How many days until the festival? And how many days to travel to Catherine? Uh, the performance is in two days. Um, the the actual uh, the party is basically three days because the the big performance is the last of the festival, and then after that is the party, um, the the yeah. exclusive party. It takes about a day to get out to where Catherine is. Out beyond the winter farm, um, it's it's if you had fast horses, maybe you could make it there and back in a day. Um, but the part of the problem is that you have to go through the woods and that just slows you down anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing you do kind of remember Annie, um, and this strikes you partially, it's one of those things that probably happens to you every once in a while, especially now where you're thinking a little bit about where you were back home and that, that, uh, the physical activity of doing the, um, the embroidery kind of reminds you of some of the, the growing up you did and the lessons that were given to you and, Lessons on statecraft and lessons on on planning. Some of the lessons that some of the other, uh, the uh, well, even uh, uh, your oh, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, I want to say Giordano, but that's not his name. Anyway, uh, the 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 lessons you would have gotten about efficient travel um, and the argument about getting from one place to another. And one of the things that strikes you is a thought that. If you were openly, uh, you know, a ruler, then you could order things to be done for you. Or moreover, you could order certain resources to be brought to bear. And you're reminded that there are griffin riders in the city. And griffins could easily make that travel a lot faster. Because they don't have to contend with the land at all. Hey... But you wouldn't be able to command them, but they do offer griffin rides. Hmm. I mean, that's a nice. I, I just wouldn't know if we would want bring us directly there or bring us most of the way there and then do the rest of it on foot and then go back farm how far was it it was just a few hours there and then back right the winter farm was basically the the last landmark you had um, the last sort of civilized area and then beyond the farm was where the old temple was buried in the woods and the farm would have like places to park the griffins it might spook the cows a little bit but if they're well-trained griffins that wouldn't be a problem Probably end up being expensive. Yeah. 
you actually have ride tickets. You have uh, some of the tickets left from the carnival itself, which is what covers the, the Griffin rides. But is it a ride or is it more like a rental? <laughs> For that, you'd have to invest. At that point. We can we can take a look if Drift that would be cool. quite quicker. Yeah, it definitely would be. So. Or I wonder if a uh, Dudak oh. could teleport us there somehow. Dudak, whatever. Specific landmarks to to travel, from what I understood. That's all he offered is that he had places between specific doors actually that were created. Um, that was the way he got around. Okay. I don't think bringing him anywhere is closer to Cathron. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Hmm. Kind of uh, opposing goals there. <laughs> Speaking of which, which one do you think is correct? I don't know. My apologies. Silas shows up at the table. Uh, I, I don't know which one's correct. At, at this point, it seems like it is a situation that is above mere mortal's head. And I just need to trust that the gods know what they're doing. Well, I have complete faith in Ignis. Medric, you can make a religion roll. Let's hope it's more than one this time. No. Well, that's well more it's, more, it's <laughs> more than one, but it's like not a very high it's a sex one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, You know, the, 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 the phrase, let's hope the gods know what they're doing, kind of tweaks something in your in your memory and... Mostly it's about some of the early lessons that you received as you joined as an acolyte of Ignis, which is that while the gods know what they're doing, they rely upon their mortal uh, um, their mortal instruments to really carry forth most of the activity in the world. They try not to interfere directly because when they do, really bad things happen. Yeah, bad things like the Great Confusion probably. What's <laughs> that? I don't... Yeah. So you can catch Silas up, perhaps, on what what he missed. Yeah, we're thinking we're discussing, of doing uh, a is... Griffin ride, when truck firing the rest by foot, and then catching the Griffin rides back to town to try to expedite the travel to go see Catherine. Yeah. That's an option, sure. at least. Sky looks good. We may need to find Sandy at some point, too. She apparently still hasn't come back. That's it's not been normal. a few days Where now. Be? Yeah. I mean, I don't think Dr. Wait. Marigold would have harmed her, but Dr. Marigold is involved well, in some sketchy research also. So, did We We didn't see Dr. Marigold after the point we saw him in the uh, the haunted house, did we? Um, no, but it is a big town and you guys have been busy with a bunch of other things. You spent most of a day, um, with Dudek. Yep. But Silas is thinking that perhaps Cathron was, uh, has gone missing because of some interaction there. Uh, we haven't seen the doc since that either. Um, but we did rescue the doc though. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, Hopefully. I mean, I don't know exactly what was going on, but, uh, but yeah, if, if she's not back by the time of the, of my performance, we might have to go take a look for her. It's not normal for her to be away, uh, for very long. I mean, so Medrick, are you able to send messages to people that you've met? Would you be able to 
messages to see if to just oh, check why up didn't on I it? think of that? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I do that. I just want to make sure I have that slotted. I usually do, but <laughs> sending. Okay, level three. All right, I will send. Do a message. And that's Sydney, right? Sandy is not. Is... Oh, yeah. Sandy, okay. Yeah. Herp the derp. Yeah, Sandy's normally the one. Send it to the right one of the triplets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't want her to rush her <laughs> saying, I'm <laughs> almost and done. She's like, hey. <laughs> send it I'm to just back here. You can't watch. <laughs> she gets. Yeah. All right. While Medric is composing a message, do Silas and Annie have anything else to discuss? Hmm. So you're sure you want to take a griffin ride? I, I do want to take a griffin ride. I logistics of I just think it'll be faster than taking uh, the day-long ride there and then the day-long ride back. Oh, probably, well, we yeah. But, uh, I'm just to not... do it before your performance. Oh, I, um, I think your logic is sound. Um, do you really trust those things not to, like, if you fall off, that's a long way down. I'm not big on heights. Land, sea, that's fine. Air, I don't trust it. All right, I got the message ready. So I'll focus, I'll imagine Sandy, like, in my mind. And I'll think out loud to her, or not, well, I'll just think to her. Hi, it's Medrick. Are you okay? Your sisters have not seen you for a few days. We'll have to do our switch over in a few minutes, but um, yeah. you you reach out, cast the spell, and feel the message kind of flow into the ether. What you get back is confused. It's words, but they seem to be muted or not entirely making sense. Um, the answer is yes. What? Who? Oh. Where? That's basically the message back. Well, that's not, that doesn't sound good. It made no sense. It was along the lines of, yes, what, who, where, like she's lost somewhere. Or really hung over, but for three days? Hmm. I mean, to be fair, you only messaged her today, so it's not like you had a hungover message for three days in a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just not to slight Sandy's reputation too much here. Well, at least we know she's not dead. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, she but if she doesn't to... know where she is or what's going on, then something might be going on or something might be up. Mm, she could have, she could be partly asleep, but yeah, I th I think on the list of important things we have to do, hers is maybe after we get back, but before the party. So or we after have, the party, have the time. two days before the performance, like the performance is in two days, and then the party is the day after that. One trip farm, traveling back takes a day. Unless we take the Griffins, we're not doing that before the party. Yeah. Where I'm coming from. Uh, 
Catherine is there. Everything's fine. If not, it's going to take us to figure out what the hell's going on anyway. Yeah. Now, if you trust those uh, beaked monsters, then uh, sure, I'll uh, I'll give it a try. And would, would we have time to do both? Griffin, have, have I ever been on a Griffin ride? Um, they certainly do have trained Griffin riders in the kingdom. Would you have been t taken advantage of that? Probably. I mean, they wouldn't say <laughs> no person. if you wanted to do it. Uh, your your parents might not appreciate that you did that, but you probably would have done it and then told them. So, probably. This is how I got here, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Do, that is exactly your rule to follow most of the time. Um, and so, yeah, you've had if some I'm not experience. Sure. You've had some experience with trained griffin riders and great trained griffins. They are powerful beasts, um, but well-trained griffins are no more dangerous than a well-trained horse. Except it, you know, goes in three dimensions and flies and has a <laughs> massive beak and claws. Other than that, totally like a horse. Sky horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's technically a pegasus, but... Yeah. So would we have time to they... do both? Look, after, look for Catron and... Look for Sandy before the performance. I don't think hey. so. I think we're cutting it close no. at this point. I no, think we maybe have... the the are probably to Catherine. And then look for Sandy, or look for Sandy, performance party, go see Catherine. I think we should look for Sandy, because she is mortal. Catherine is an entity. And if we talk to Marigold, he could shed some more light on, on what happened that night, where we saw Catherine fall into a void. That is fair. And if yeah. Sandy's in trouble, then maybe she doesn't have long. I mean, can you contact Catherine? I could try. Do I want to spend another third level spell? <laughs> That's the issue, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we won't be in a combat today. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and it's like I do want to contact Catherine, but if we don't go, then what's what's the point? Well, they, like, I mean, she, if she, she either answers, everything's fine, no problems. Well, if she or, if she answers, then we don't have to we don't have to go. Yeah, I suppose. Um, because that's kind of what we're trying to figure out is is she gone gone? Because if she's still around, then Silas is very possibly wrong about where Molly is. All right, let's do this. Catherine. I said if I had to choose between who powers of her own and abilities of her own versus who to our knowledge does not more than the other. Agreed. So once again, Medrick sits to compose a message carefully. That young uh, man comes back out again. Sees you sitting at the table now, Silas. Do you want to eat now? No. Fine. Are you done with your food? Tell tells Annie and Medrick. No. No. Are you going to buy anything else? That's it. What she said. <laughs> Which I have to laugh I flip at like a cutoff for me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, flip um... a, I flip him a copper and say, uh, uh, go bother someone else for a while. <laughs> um. Was Catherine in, a, in another plane? 
Possibly, we don't know. Does sending work through another plane? Yes. Okay. You do know that okay. it is there it is, is a... limited. There's a chance it would not. There's a chance of failure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so the message is the, the boy catches the 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 coin, shrugs, and kind of wanders off back to the to the back area. All right. So I'll focus on Catherine, what she looks like. I'll picture her in my mind and ask, "Are you okay? We saw you fall into a void. Was it an illusion, or are you in danger?" Okay. Uh, roll a d20, please. D20. Five. Okay. Um, you send the message out. And there is a bit of delay. And at first you think maybe the message did not be was not received, which could mean that Catherine no longer exists or perhaps is on another plane. Maybe that was all real. You're not really sure at this point. But then the response comes back. In the in the, the same way that Catherine seems to speak all the time, it's filled with confidence, but not as much as perhaps you normally would expect. Uh, the message is, I am lost. I do not know if I am well or not. I cannot reach you. I cannot reach anything. And that's the response. So I presume that Medric relays the response back yeah. to the others? Well, that's not good. No, that kind of confirms my suspicions. Uh, okay, so we don't have Catherine around anymore she seems lost she's not in danger but if we go after her right now if we go after her right now we might not make it back in time for the performance oh yeah 25 seconds <laughs> okay dramatic we'll, pause we will have break and come right back and we have returned back to the breakfast table around which the fate of the universe is being decided. So far, you sent off a couple of messages that didn't give you back entirely convincing answers. What would you like Something to do Something is wrong with both of these situations. <laughs> yeah, if Marigold could provide additional information, we might have more of a clue if, as to what's going on with Catherine. That we might not be going uh, completely blind when we, when we do go to rescue Catherine or help Catherine. Well, right now, I don't know where we would go to do it. I mean, I wanted to go there just to see if she was missing or not so that I we'd have a better idea what may have happened with people. But that's kind of been confirmed now. Uh, at least that Catherine is lost somewhere. Um, I think that... I think we should wait on going to Catherine's until after the party then. Yeah. Uh, now that we've kind of got that answer or question answered instead, we might want to look for Sandy right now mm -hmm. and then work on the party after. And question Marigold. He might know something because he wasn't yeah. in the house of horrors. Yeah. Well, and she was last with him. Mm -hmm. So, Uh, and we know where his shop is, so we know where to start, where, where to start looking. Yeah. And if necessary, we know where the other entrance to his shop is. Mm -hmm. And we know where his hideout is. Might have to, uh, to do a little bit of a B and E, but he'll forgive us, I'm sure, if it's for the good of the world. Mm. Well, eat up, I guess. Yeah, I'm just we'll to... like I was gradually like finishing my breakfast as this conversation was going on. Since he asked if I was done, I just said no out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> this poor kid. All right, you finish your breakfast and then what? 
Um, the child is not re returned for the plates, presumably just waiting till you leave. Yeah. There's going to be a Karen that's going to enter, like, in that restaurant, I swear. Like, <laughs> regular well, stuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> she would, like, smack that kid. <laughs> we should probably check out Marigold's place. Yeah. I mean, that's... Good place to start. Yeah. Because I think there's that. And did he have a temporary stall set up for the uh, the celebrations or was he working out of his shop uh he did have a temporary stall in the main square with a lot of the other um okay. vendors well let's check the the temporary stall first and then stall, if it's not shop, there, secret hideout and that secret secret hideout mm. yeah hopefully he's not in trouble well he isn't because in what we saw in the House of Horrors, we did manage to rescue him, so he didn't fall into a void or anything, but he might remember something. Well, I mean, depending on what else happened in there. Yeah. We don't know what the guy running that place is doing. He's got a beholder down there. That's not normal. No. He, the beholder was more polite than this Caden kid, but anyway. Okay, let's go check the the stall then okay. onwards as you head out uh, it's still fairly early morning and uh traffic is light um just like at the at the village silas um those who get up early in the morning to go out for uh fishing are already long gone the rest of the town is starting to wake up a little bit uh, many of the people you had seen uh, along your walk who were um, worse for wear from the previous night's celebrations have now basically started to move on and the town is slowly coming back into full operation. The, uh, central market, um, a little bit further, uh, north from where you were kind of northeast from where you are. Um, the vendors are just kind of setting up their stalls. There's a few looky loos here and there. And as you make your way around to where, uh, Dr. Marigold had his stall, um, you realize that there seems to be a um, a, a tall, blue-skinned woman behind there uh, with numerous uh, boxes kind of propped open and many things kind of put on top of the, uh, the, um, the uh, uh, countertop, essentially. The stall is nothing really more than uh, a wooden box with a, a, a placard over the top uh, over which you can see hung uh, covering... Uh, Dr. Marigold's own well-painted sign. You know Dr. Marigold. He takes a bit of pride in what he does. So we had a, a, a carved and painted sign put up. But uh, hastily over top of that, there is uh, Lyra Natha's goods that has been uh, that has been hung over top of that. A good sign, but certainly one a little bit less uh, more well-worn, probably one that traveled a bit further. And you can see there are uh, an assortment of of uh, large fishing poles that are there, um, setting out a uh, display full of fishing ties and uh, different things like that. Uh, looking up from what they're doing, uh, the uh, the Triton um, uh, kind of looks to all of you with eyes a bit wider, as most Triton already have uh, wider eyes. But here, sensing a potential sale, uh, puts on a smile Yes, yes, you come to, to, to buy goods or to redeem tickets. We do both here. Your beautiful town has much water, and we can do well for you. Uh, she's uh, not a local, looking... is she? What? Sorry. Uh, she's Silas not a local, person. is she? No, not that you okay. recognize her anyway. There are Triton who come in uh, from, the, from the deeper waters. Um, Annie, you know a lot of Triton, Triton that are further uh, north from you. There's an entire island, Roske, which is underwater, uh, which is one of the places they hail from. Um, she introduced herself again? as Lyra Natha, L-Y-R-I-N-O-T-H-A, Liri Natha. And it's just simply Liri Natha's goods. Um, but she's kind okay. of welcoming you in with both, with both hands. Uh, and then you asked a question, Silas? No, I, I was it, 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 going to ask uh, to say actually we're looking for the miss at the booth that was supposed to be here. Um, 
and she looks at you with a, a cocked head and a little bit of confusion on her face. I hear. I hear since morning. Yes, but we're looking for Marigold. Yeah, the sign that's crossed over out. Here. Uh, this is, she this re- is booth. She reaches up and kind of adjusts her sign to cover over the remaining marigold, kind of straightening a little bit. But in my booth now, them not here. Yes, but we had to we had to speak to him. It was rather urgent. Well, they we not weren't show going up. to buy anything from him either, but we just had to speak to him. Rules say if you're not here for a day, you will lose. I win. Yes, you win, but do you, you happen buy? to know where he went? No. Why do, why do I care? Oh, I, yeah, I suppose. I have space now. I sell you goods. See, very nice. And she holds up uh, the sort of the sort of uh, wooden board with several uh, tied flies. They look elegant. They look quite quite fancy. You catch many fish with this, more than anyone else's. So the previous person was gone for at least a day. She kind of puts them down. Looks kind of annoyed. Yes, yes, yes. Not here yesterday. Thank you. Uh, and I'll follow that. Silas as he walks yeah. away dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of hear behind you hear behind you the sort of <laughs> she seems to be expressing her displeasure. Uh, but uh, from Silas, what she said, Silas uses minor illusion to make a fart sound from her booth. <laughs> you hear uh, a sort of a uh, sort of. Oi! And then, a, and then a sort of a, the, the weird laughter of the triton, <laughs> which carries better underwater than it does in the air. And upon hearing the fart sound, Medrick wonders out loud, uh, hey, Silas, you said you can taste the air? What happens when somebody farts? I'm saying nothing. <laughs> I'm heading towards the shop. <laughs> These are the burning questions we need to have answered. Yes. <laughs> the implications of all these things. So you head towards where, sorry? Marigold's shop. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, his shop is on the main drag, so it's not too far away from you, just a little bit further sort of towards the water, uh, I believe, than, uh, than the Three Bells. And you see the storefront, um, as elegant as ever, um, looks dim within. Uh, you try the door and find it to be locked. Someone translate? <laughs> she said she, she knocks. knocks. Oh, okay. Um, no response. The door is solidly locked. How busy is this road? Uh, it's getting to be pretty busy. It's starting to uh, appear um, as if the normal traffic is starting. This is the main drag, the main road. Silas uh, will... Is there, is there a back door? Possibly. You can go around the back and find out. I would like to go check. Okay. Yeah, I'll follow Annie. And Silas? Uh, Silas will stay near the front corner of the alleyway. They can call him if they find a way in. If not, he'll cover the front. Okay. Um, you pass through the narrow, narrow alleyway into an, a kind of a bit of a small um, square almost where a number of the businesses open up and there's a larger alley on the other side. This would be a kind of a delivery alley, if you will. And you walk around and sure enough, there is a back door essentially for the deliveries. You take a look at the door. Cool. Um, and you notice that it's slightly ajar. Hey, Silas, come on over. Silas will subtly uh, move back into the alleyway and then head down towards them. Okay. Uh, as you look a little bit closer, you, you realize that um, the edge of the door looks a little bit uh, ragged. If you want to take a closer look, you can make an investigation roll. Whoever would like I to do that. that. I I'll Annie's do that too, even though I'm not very good at investigating. You can also help someone, which gives them a Yeah, I'll help Annie investigate. Okay. I will make sure nobody comes by, so 
to make sure you're like that's worse. You're like I have not rolled above a four. Oh no! Five. Oh no! Five in total was it? And yes, that ten was with. I didn't hear any of that. <laughs> the ten in earlier total. was with a four. I've not rolled higher than a four. Okay. On the okay. die. So ten can totals. I, what I what I heard. Can I try Sorry. to look to investigate too? Five. Uh, you were helping. You were helping Annie. Right. But after helping mm -hmm. Annie, can I investigate myself? <laughs> Nothing has changed. So no. Okay. As far as uh, you're, you're... yeah, uh, Annie got a five. Uh, Silas will try, and he'll take a look. Okay. I'll help you Silas see, too. You see Annie kind of poking around the door frame. Wow. Uh, God damn. Annie's kind of poking around the door frame. Uh, Annie, you take one point of damage as a nasty splinter gets caught in your finger. Uh, <sighs> as you realize that the door frame is, is indeed ragged. It's a, it, you would have been fine, except uh, Silas kind of sidled, sidled up beside you and went, hey, what's that? And kind of shoved you into the, uh, the cracked door frame. I door. am going to use my uh, lock picks to like... <laughs> nice. To file down. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Actually, Take a moment. Si and... Silas pulls out the the healers kit that we've had since the beginning of the game. Here, have some bandages. <laughs> <laughs> I should make you make your medicine roll, but that would be just too much on top. So yes, you take a moment to kind of painfully pull the splinter out. Um, there you go. Uh, right, Silas wraps a, a bandage around it. Uh, and uh, you're you're unfettered from this nasty splinter, but the, you do realize though that having kind of pushed on it now, the door is in fact free swinging open. It's not locked. It's not even closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we go in. Okay. Did somebody break into here, or did he just forget to lock his door? It's a fairly small door. As you step in, um, the first thing you notice is just an uncomfortableness underfoot. Uh, as you see sort of ragged, uh, uh, or feel really, the, the ragged remains of little bits and pieces of wood um, somehow shattered inside the door. Um, yeah, that was definitely of, be a need. You, uh, you yeah. step, as you kind of step over it, you can also look back and from the outside light now shining in, you see there is a small hole about, uh, I don't know, three, three inches uh, around on the bottom under, under underside of the door, which is where all this wood shavings are coming from. Uh, inside, you're seeing the back of his apothecary, and you can see now that it is a shambles. It looks as though uh, many uh, uh, bottles have been knocked over, some have been shoved, uh, a few of the drawers have been pulled open very roughly. Um, there is signs of a, uh, a, a massive rolling, if you will, of the entire space. You can try to find more details by investigating, taking some time to, to poke around. Should we report this to Captain Verendel? Uh, we probably should, yeah. But first, we might want to see if there's any clues for where Mr. Marigold is. It looks like somebody Marigold. came in here looking for something. Sixteen. Okay. I have a dart. Yeah, hammer and shield came out. Just in case whatever did this is still here. Okay. I will also investigate to see if I can find any clues. That's a six, so probably not. Okay. Um, that does help Marie to uh, type it in the chat so that I can also see if this, if I seem to have missed something, which unfortunately, I, technology. Um, okay, so you start poking around uh, and Annie uh, uh, taking a very cautious look around. Medrick, you find yourself kind of uh, walking around and you realize that you're kind of kicking some of the glass and some of it's breaking under, under underfoot as you're kind of moving around. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw for Medric. Yep. Um, That's a five. Okay. You take one point of piercing damage as you end up stepping on some of this, uh, this glass and kind of yeah. turning your ankle a little bit. Um, as you're looking around Silas and trying to figure out what the, the state of everything is here and trying to figure out what happened, um, it looks as though someone was, was looking intently for something. There, you actually see some, some, uh, some uh, raw, um, um, what looks like some raw ingredients that 
uh, including a little bit of, of a silvery powder, which you think might actually be silver powder, just sort of spread out on the, on the ground. It would have been valuable if someone had kept it, but they didn't seem to pay in, any attention to that. Um, the uh, room is uh, turned over not only uh, as you kind of would move through and open doors and doors, but also seems to be weirdly uh, uh, things dragged out and brought onto the floor as though kind of being, being examined from that very low height. Um, there's uh, signs of things having been chewed on, that the uh, edges of some of the boxes have been chewed on as they sat down towards the, the ground, as though not so much uh, uh, trying to open and look, but sort of peek inward in them. And you find a couple of, of uh, boxes, um, which were essentially labeled uh, for Dr. Marigold, um, that had been broken open and straw has been strewn about. It looks as though something about uh, a foot and a half long uh, and perhaps anywhere from a few inches to several inches wide was in this box, kept safe, and then it has been taken. You're not sure exactly what it would be, but uh, it would be those, that, those dimensions and two dimensions and then up to you know four or five inches wide. The one thing that does come to mind, uh, although you don't think that Dr. Marigold had it and wasn't necessarily storing it here, but the vase you brought to him at one point was about that size. Oh. Hmm. We actually left the vase with him? or no, uh, I think we had brought a vase to him. or We'd asked him about it anyway. Right, and there were more... Ah, no, you you've fuck. been keeping that vase <laughs> in your in your bag. Yeah, but yeah you guys say have more that vases? vase that you brought to him um, before. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there were more vases because I remember something about that. And you said the boxes looked chewed on from a low level. Um, well, not everything looks that way, but some of them, it stands out to yeah, you yeah. as if that's a, another piece of it. Um, I think that is, it was missed in this chewing through, like anything that's locked or anything might be something that they were looking for. Okay, you can make an investigation roll as well as you kind of have a different tactic to look for things. I'm assuming that Silas is kind of pointing out your discoveries as you're, as you're going along. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I rolled above a ball before. Uh, I rolled a six, so a total of seven. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Uh, Maybe we should just report it to the guards carded. and let them do the investigation. <laughs> uh as you look around with that perspective, you're, you're, you're having a little bit of a distraction because Medrick is still stomping around with his heavy boots and breaking glass. Sorry. Um, you're going to you, make things worse. You find what you think is probably a strong box, and then you realize that it wasn't that strong, and you pick it up, and it opens un, uh, a down. It opened, you, you had it upside down, and it spills numerous uh, uh, little bottles of uh, what looked like dried herbs or something kind of spill out onto the ground. Uh, that clearly was not a locked box. Um, there are spaces where it looks like boxes were are missing, uh, mostly small, uh, about a couple of inches on a side, uh, maybe a few inches deep. Uh, whether they were locked boxes or not, it's really hard to tell. But it looks it looks conspicuous, as though these in, these ingredients or something was pulled out. The biting. Does it look like rats? Make an like a gnawing away at it. Uh... Be highly intelligent rats, or maybe ferrets. So five. You've you've <laughs> known you've known of of rats. Rats are not an uncommon thing to see, and to your eyes, it kind of looks like a not rat, but it it looks more thorough. Maybe than a rat does, or or maybe these were just mm -hmm. thorough rats. It's really hard to tell. Uh, Silas says, "I think this is Clockwinder's doing." What? I think it might have been his mechanical rats who came in. Oh, chewed at the boxes, and they're very low to the ground. They pulled stuff out onto the ground to look at. 
And if it was if it was a vase, Clockwinder is the one that that has it's the made, connection yeah. to uh, Terry there. Uh, he's the one with the interest in the vases. Yeah, but I if think... he had an interest in the vases, why would he sell it? The sea it devils were trying to get the vases. Yeah, but he might have only been selling the ones that he knew weren't useful. Maybe the one, uh, maybe there was one in this box that actually had something in it he could use. Even the one in my backpack feels like it did something. Not something good, but... I mean, the vases themselves contain stuff. I, I, I don't know if, if they were actually magical themselves. I wonder if he somehow learned that Dr. Marigold dropped his name and then went after him. I don't know how I would have learned that because we were the only ones there, but... I'm going to go further into the, the, is his home in here as well? Like, is it like a case of he lives above the shop or does he have a different place that he lives? You, uh, so you've only really been in the last, the back part of his shop. This is the, this is where he does his work. There's also a front part of the shop. You guys have really investigated. It has its own door going from this part in. Um, but you do know that he actually lives in another building. Um, this is just a shop. He has the lower level of a, of a warehouse, uh, mm -hmm. which is where you guys actually went to before, which is a, a, a bricked-in cement uh, basement, essentially. And yeah, that's where the, he does the underground uh, tunnels. Right. And that's where he actually does his work. You're not really sure where he lives exactly. Um, you presume it, it may be up, up above this floor or maybe in, in that building or maybe he has a separate accommodation altogether. You don't really know. Or in the sewers. Who knows? Yeah, he seems to have a lot of uh, living quarters. Real estate. <laughs> um, I'm going to go search in the front of the store, like, just triple check. I'll follow Annie, but, like, carefully so I don't break anything else. <laughs> okay. Um, once again, you can make an investigation check either uh, together so one person gets advantage or individually. All right, I'll give assistance to Annie by not breaking anything. <laughs> I'm being really careful. Very slow steps, deliberate, making sure like when I turn around. Twenty and a three. <laughs> so so what? So what, twenty one. Twenty one. Okay, that's that's much better. And I kind of imagine that Medrick is 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 kind of tender toesing a little bit into the room, and then like, yeah. what about this? <laughs> what about this? Is this supposed to be normal? Is that what that's supposed to be? So I the... kind of want to feel, make this also a little bit of the moment when starts to realize that she doesn't need to necessarily see things to see things mm, okay because uh, of her blind sense she it's just like a feeling of there's something over there that i need to look at sure and in fact the the front blinds are pulled down so it's fairly dim in this room but you're still able to kind of easily navigate and when medrick points to something you kind of inherently just put your hand over that direction without actually even looking uh, and kind of know, and, and maybe Medrick, you pick up on that, I don't know. The front room has similarly been trashed. In here, what he primarily has are large displays, posters and... Uh, yeah, I do pick and, up on it. Uh, perfect. Uh, posters and, uh, uh, you know, wooden uh, tilted uh, displays with kind of the sets of herbs and how, you know, happy looking people besides some of the, the herbs and then other herbs, which have, uh, you know, a sour face and then the, the plus the herb equals happiness kind of things. These sort of advertising details are mostly what's out here. Yeah. It does look as though it's been gone through. And in fact, on the display where there's little pinned dried versions of the herbs, you actually can see a couple of them missing. Uh, in particular, you notice that there was one, uh, a, a a face that had bright, wide open eyes, and then whatever the herb was, and then a sleeping person on the other side. Um, clearly, that's meant to to be some some sort of uh, help to to sleep, essentially. Uh, another one, uh, someone grabbing their jaw as if uh, they have tooth pain. The herb missing, and then them smiling uh, with no no grabbing of jaw. So those sorts of things. Are, there's a couple of little what looks like vials are in each of these spots, but a couple of them have been pulled free. Um, similarly, you see um, uh, scattered about the room kind of 
anything that was on a shelf got knocked off the shelf and was kind of pulled apart. Um, but it doesn't look like anything valuable in this particular room, aside from you know some of the some of the the, the vases used to hold some of the flowers that he normally keeps uh, were knocked over and broken, um, kind of haphazardly. So I wonder if all of these were taken by the person who broke into here, or if they were taken by opportunists later, or like opportunistic thieves later. It doesn't necessarily look that exactly the expensive things were taken. It was specific things that seemed to be taken. Yes, yes. And in fact, uh, as Silas would have pointed out, this is silver dust he finds on the floor. That's actually pretty valuable, but it was just treated as if it's, you know, not important at all, as if it's just regular dust. Um, while they're out front, uh, Silas is going to take a couple of the boxes that were chewed on and try just dabbing his tongue against them to see if he tastes anything metallic. Okay, that's neat, interesting. Uh, make me a... Hmm... Let's call it a. <laughs> I'm gonna have to say perception. Constitution. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but you're just perceiving things that normal people would not. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Unless they have... have advantage, in which case it's twenty. Uh, not advantage in this okay. case. It's basically is an expansion of your of your capabilities, not not an enhancement necessarily. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, you effectively have a kind of blind sight. It's kind of taste the air sight, if that makes any sense. Um, you, uh, uh, you kind of flick out your tongue and gingerly kind of snap it against the edges of this. Uh, you get a little bit of, of a splinter, but it's one of those things that when you're using something that's so intimately connected to yourself, you react faster than you would with like an elbow. So you don't get any splinters necessarily, but you do get a little bit of extra wood on the edges of it. Um, Blinting in my tongue. Blinting my tongue. <laughs> Thankfully not. It wasn't that bad a roll. Um, <laughs> but you do kind of uh, pick up on first the wood grain itself. Um, this is treated wood, so it has a bit of a bitter taste. Almost a, a you kind of imagine that that it's it's treated with something pretty heavy, so it probably would be poisonous. In fact, if you were to eat the wood, um, maybe that was intentionally treated that way. You're not quite sure. Uh, but then there is a, a sort of, uh, um, let's say, a, a, almost a cold, uh, 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 I won't say spicy taste, strangely enough, that kind of feels like some sort of residue, um, which is probably what was ever what was inside the box. It left a residue. It wasn't just a, a fully solid matter or didn't seem to be. Uh, and then the third thing you detect is just this edge of kind of like licking a, a, a knife, uh, which has just the minutest trace of some sort of metal. Um, but that could, it could be something like the sign of, of, of metal. It could have been uh, uh, an ax used to carve off the edge of this. It's hard to tell the detail, but those are the kind of sensations you're picking up on. Okay. Um. I think before we look at, we start tampering with more things, I think we should probably the, the, the captain about this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Silas will bring a box out and, and just kind of a little guardedly or almost sheepishly say um, thanks to um, this and he points into his mouth um there's some sort of uh it was metal i think used to chew at these boxes i think it's his mechanical rats wait, wait, wait. you like i'm almost certain of it but we might want to check his other residences first yeah because who knows where it is? Go to another possible crime is. scene. I think that we should talk yes. to Barrendale. Definitely. Uh, should we request Martha's assistance or Marta's assistance in case we have to go to that residence? 
I mean, it's probably just as easy to get into the top, although, I mean, it depends on if Verendel lets us break into his place. But I don't think Verendel yeah. knows about it. Well, I mean, we're, if we're telling Verendel that uh, he's miss uh, that the two of them are missing, then uh, we might want to give him all the information. So I'm going to go look for Verendel. All right. Is everybody going? Or, um, or... Well, I'm yeah, we probably should explain. Do... do I see any thieves can't anywhere? Uh, where are you looking for thieves can't? Like, like around the door or anything? Um, a house. Make a perception check. Uh, that's still above a four. <laughs> uh, that's a 13. Okay. Um, kind of a bit, uh, you know, remembering back to some of the, the lessons that were, that were taught to you, but different things to look for. Uh, above the back door... Um, you see in the in the sill around the back door, it's almost impossible to see except for the the angle, and you kind of know that one of the ways to to hide thieves can't is to do it at an angle where you wouldn't be normally looking, but you know to look for it. And what you see is carved in front uh, above the back door is the the can't for friend, which is typically not, uh, which is typically put on doors where they are not to be targeted by thieves because they are uh, a help. They can provide sometimes illicit services. Sometimes it's about people who, who are already in the pocket or under the, under the protection. In this case, it may be that perhaps literally out of the back door of his establishment, uh, perhaps Marigold was a friend to certain uh, people in need. And at least the guy that makes drugs respect. being a friend to people. I mean, who would have thought <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, he makes he makes drugs for for medicines as well as for other purposes. Um, he doesn't sell poisons out of the front of his shop. There's no sign that says if you want to poison things, come here. But that could be another thing that he he creates. You can't really tell from the ruined uh, apothecary in the back because it's just a shambles at the moment. Uh, you didn't find any books in the apothecary. Um, whatever records he keeps, he either keeps them elsewhere or doesn't keep any records. Or uh, similar with similar with formulas or so, or they were taken. Okay. Okay. And all of you going to see Verendel? Yeah. Okay. You walk back up the main street. Uh, by now, the the market is starting to really pick up. You can hear the vendors calling across the market, including the one that you had, you'd talked to before, uh, Liranatha, but she kind of. Uh, you hear her call out towards you and then sort of like, oh, <laughs> and then stop, uh, kind of looking around for other customers. I'll the, just awkwardly uh, wave at her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you walk up to, at the corner of the, the market square is actually where the old uh, windmill is, which is the uh, functional uh, jail and uh, the, the place for the, uh, the, the police to live, for the, the reeve to live. Um, you hear some uh, some uh, uh, calling from inside the, the the building as you kind of walk in. Um, you hear a familiar voice, actually, uh, kind of a kind of uh, cheekily calling out for the reeve uh, in song and in and in verse, uh, and kind of calling out for the the reeve to to let him go. That uh, nothing nothing of this is true. I say, for I am never. Uh, been one to uh, allay any good man or any good woman of their cash, their time, or anything else. And you recognize the, the sing-songy sound of uh, Dale Nest, um, who you met out with the uh, out with the loggers out of town, uh, who seems to be incarcerated inside. Uh, a uh, rather uh, uh, overworked-looking Verendel is on the inside, uh, kind of half-smiling at the at the uh, the uh, songs that he's been giving, uh, but also not really listening either. Uh, with Dale or a couple of others that probably were picked up last night, those who were not uh, uh, so inebriated as to fall asleep in this in this street and, and perhaps bother people, uh, were picked up by Verendel and his crew. 
But as he sees you all enter, um, you can see the smile go quite wide when Annie comes in uh, and then kind of moderate a little bit when he realizes it's neither uh, a direct call by Annie, but rather all three of you troop in. Uh, and then he's like, oh, kind of, these, these three again. <laughs> kind of, kind of gestures towards the I tears. come with bad news. Well, that's never good to hear. What can I do for you today? like Marigold's shop has been ransacked. He is missing and so is the person he's been spending time with. Well, that's not good. Uh, he'll shuffle a few papers on his desk and kind of look for his, his uh, log, essentially, and start scribbling it down. Uh, perhaps you can start from the beginning. Uh, I'm familiar with Dr. Marigold. Uh, were you saying his home or his shop? His shop so his far. Shop, we have, we have yet. So far, we were going to go to his after. All right, he takes some notes down. He's been spending time with Sandy. She has not been at the inn for three days now. We him was a haunted house. Player is forgetting. And we're also the day uh, like the dunk tank too, like. <laughs> Because I remember uh, we helped him. <laughs> yeah, it's been a couple of days because yesterday was spent with Dudek and the day before was the, the Nightmare House. Um, and he kind of nods and, and takes notes. Three day, or two days, that's, that's concerning. You don't think that they... Well, I guess aside from the, the shop being turned over, you don't think that they've simply gone off together for um, a little privacy? No, uh, I, no. I sent a message telepathically to Sandy, who we, he was spending time with, and it was just the response I got was confused, didn't know where she was. It was kind of muted. Mm. I think, uh, you know, the creepy shit that's been going on for the last few weeks, I think that has something to do with it. You mean the festival? No, well, possibly that too, but this darkening of, of the town, basically. And he we kind of solved one problem. He looks at you a little bit confused. I I don't know what you mean. Well, you know how... Like, I'll just uh, kind of go over the whole, like, water spout and all that shit that's been going on. Uh, how... Well, th that was, a, a, like, a couple of weeks ago. That The, the major yeah. attack on the town, that was a while ago. Um, but uh, um, he kind of nods. Some of the forces that were in play then or might still be in play now is what I'm trying to say, basically. Well, I've expanded the ranks and added more people on patrol, but we haven't been turning up too many others than many points to, to Dale. People having a little bit too much fun. But that sounds like something else entirely. You don't think it's possible that Marigold destroyed his own place, do you? I doubt it. Not likely. Taking things of value. Hmm. Well, this is uh, concerning. It looks um, like it was somebody looking for something specific. Any idea what that was? Possibly a vase. Well, a vase? What? There was a vase? It was in the box. Well, it was out of the box. It, there it was, was a, a box that had a vase-sized opening in it. <laughs> That's not good, but okay. What's so special about a vase? We, we think, uh, I'll take out the vase out of my backpack. <laughs> we, we think I that... about the vase thefts before. Okay. So you think it's another one of those? Uh, Possible. Well, well, I think it stuff. might be. Hmm. Uh, okay. Well, I'm up to my ears in just about everything right now. And trying yeah, to manage the expanded crew. But thankfully... You have one of my top investigators with you. So, if you need me to make but, it official... But, you know, before we went into uh, a crime scene. I appreciate yeah, we're that. Going to, we're going to uh, Marigold's shot, or residence next. All right, just be careful. If there is somebody who's snatched Marigold and his friend and turned over a shop, that could be dangerous. There are a lot of people in town from all over 
Do you think it's one of them or someone local? I I don't think it's someone local. What do you What do you know about Clockwinder? I I think it's Clockwinder. I have ten Ten minutes warning, so uh, the clock is winding down. (laughs) I've heard the name, but I haven't got much detail. It's almost like he's a ghost. The few people who have said anything have just basically said that they didn't know anything about them. I don't even know he what they look like. might be a person of interest. No, I'm collecting what I can, but like I said, no one seems to know anything. But do you think this Marigold, or this Clockwinder person is, inve- is somehow involved in all this? Yeah, I'll pull out the rat. Okay, this is the one you found down below, I think. Mechanical rat, yeah. This, What's that thing? I believe it's a piece of Clockwinder's work. It doesn't function anymore. But he's been known to build small devices like this. Uh, I think that's at least part of what he used for uh, searching uh, Marigold's uh, offices. There's traces of them having chewed on things to open them. Great. So now I have to tell my people to keep an eye out for rats. Do you know how many rats are in this town? Well, mechanical Yes. Mm. I'm thinking perhaps you might not want to have your people go in after Clockwinder. He likes his privacy. That might, well, that might be a job for us. Frankly, I don't even know where to send them. And many of the people that I've hired recently are simple guards, people who've barely even got used to the the feel of steel in their hands. We have to look for, we might be able to use this as a way to find him or find a way into him if we're trying, if we pretend to try to return it. Speaking of new people, how have uh, Flick and Flack been doing? And he kind of rolls his eyes. <sighs> I have my suspicions about them, but, and he kind of leans uh, closer, trying not to be heard by, by Dale, who's right there practically, <laughs> but so you're not sure if he hears or not. There's an old saying, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. I have my eye on I agree. So far, fine. Nothing really suspicious at all. But they just sort of, I don't know, they have an air about them, you know? Yep. I mean, one of them assaulted Annie the first time we met them. He swears that wasn't him. It was a misunderstanding. Frankly, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to see where they were at. So far, they're efficient. I've got my my shirt and show him the scar. I'm like, not a misunderstanding <laughs> on, on my stomach. On my stomach. They work for the diamond, but uh, if they're efficient, yeah, just keep your enemies closer. <laughs> yeah. And you hear from the jail cell, uh, Dale kind of pipe into a line of, uh, and I'm going to steal from a real world song. Uh, they say her eyes are like the diamonds. <laughs> may or may not be relevant. Um, Dale, have... what, what brings you here? Much mirth and merriment. Maybe a little bit too much, in fact. <laughs> Looked into something you shouldn't have, didn't you? No, no, no. I wouldn't say I was using my eyes at all. Maybe my fingers, though. Mostly my stomach. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll be out of here in time. Right, Sir Jailer? You'll be out by the end of the day. See? Just a little okay. R&R to prepare for the uh, the uh, competition in a couple of days. I'll look at him, then back Silas, then back at him, and back at Silas. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, we ran into him into the woods. He He's not a bad guy, seriously. Never a bad guy. Sometimes a terrible performer, but that's only on my worst of days. I wouldn't <laughs> say he's a good guy, just not a bad guy. <laughs> I see another mm-hmm. cattail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's migrating from camera to camera. <laughs> uh, so, uh, if you're going to proceed, do so carefully. 
Well, let me know what happens. If you need backup, let me know. I've got a few people I can pull from other, other routes, but it'll take a while. Or if you need me to be there, Annie, I'll be there. This is where we're, uh, I'll give him like where we're going next. And cause I don't know if he knows about his like main workspace or not. So he notes it down along with all the other notes. Um, That's I've never been there myself. But, uh, it's actually central to town that he has this, but it is a warehouse in the town. Um, okay. Part of the reason for that you probably gather is the fact that because the town water flows in, any sort of underground establishment too close to the water is just going to flood. Yeah. So, uh, unless there's something else. I to do this. Good luck. And that seems like a good time to actually plan to have the end of this hour. So yeah. <laughs> we will return in just a few minutes after a break. Please stay. I'm, I'm going to go feed the cat. That too. Yeah, I'm also going to go feed my cat because she's yelling outside my door right now. So we'll be and right back. Watch. And we're back once more. You've just checked in with Captain Verendel, who said to be cautious, but go forward. Now you're making your way to where you know the underground workshop for uh, Dr. Marigold is. That's the warehouse workshop, right? Not the sewer secret hideout workshop? That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, he has rented out the, the basement of an old uh, uh, warehouse. I'm not sure exactly what it was used for originally, but there are several cement rooms that are in that, in that particular basement, and he carries out different kinds of work. He's never really elaborated what kind of work he does there. Mostly bodies. When you, uh, well, you do know that he also serves as the town, town's undertaker, and that is probably where he does prepare bodies, in fact. Because um, we've seen those bodies, and I've even, ta even talked to one. So, wait true. a second. Um, Mary, what was the name of Marigold's assistant, like the hulking dude? I don't remember. Dover. I'm trying to remember. Dover. Uh, Dover. I wish I could remember his last name. I did well to drag out their first name. But how would Dover just let that happen? So Marigold's workshop was probably broken into while he wasn't there, because otherwise Dover would have fucked them up. I don't imagine Dover's there that much. Dover seems to hide mostly. Yeah, I suppose. But he's always near near Marigold. Not always. Um, you do well, know that Dover's appearance can be very unsettling um, with the sort of body of a dwarf, but arms more like giant size and with a kind of nasty looking uh, larger eye than the other eye. He gets rather dis disturbing looks. Um, so you make your way to the the lower level, essentially walking around this, this warehouse. Um, and you find the uh, big wooden doors that are uh, there in front of the uh, the opening as you kind of step down some stairs to to reach to the doors. Um, this time, perhaps a little more prepared, you approach the doors, and um, Andy, once more, you actually see the, because you were kind of looking for it before, you see the, the thieves can't carving above the door again, kind of looking at that odd skew angle, uh, and once more make out friend. So this would not have been a place that any thieves who are part of whatever guild lives nearby, if you haven't really investigated uh, what, what thieves guild there might be, but there does appear to be some sort of active and uh, coordinated thieves guild here. And they have marked this as a place not to be uh, targeted. But as you move closer, it's pretty easy to see now, once again, the sort of uh, dug out spot near the base of the door where it does look as though something has chewed or carved or cut its way crudely in through the bottom of the door. And in fact, the doors are slightly ajar once more. I'm going to take the rat and try to fit it like into the hole. You put it down and it fits easily in the hole. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think the, the one you have is a bit smashed in. and crushed, but... Yeah. yeah, I think they chew... I think it's these chewing their way in. All right. I'll put the rat in my backpack. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I mean, um, considering how Matter just like saw it fit as Silas displayed it. 
And as you look around, Danny, you realize that this this is also a fairly secluded part. Um, this is probably once again kind of facing the back alley of uh, of loading, so people wouldn't necessarily have noticed. And you've seen rats in this town; they are endemic to wherever people live, and there are plenty of them here, so they wouldn't have even noticed a rat either. Um, like, do the mecha- do the mechanical rats like look f- kind of like real rats, or are they like obviously mechanical? Well, you've only seen one, um, and it is a bit cracked and broken and smashed, so you know that it's not just a normal-looking rat. Okay. But if you kind of imagine, you kind of squint a little bit, and if someone had stretched a fur over it or even just some leather, it could pass, possibly. Okay. And nobody pays attention to a rat here, I suppose. They probably don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, except for shooing them away with a broom. Um, so you approach the door. It is slightly ajar. Do you open it up? Who opens the door up? What's the marching order like here? Or are you standing uh, beside each other? I can open it. Hammer and shield is ready. Open it cautiously. Okay. I'm oh, dark between my fingers. All right. Um, you kind of pull open the door. It's not a push, it's a pull. Um, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and... Uh, just the way that you would do it because you have more storage space when you do that. Anyway, mm-hmm. you pull you pull it open. It opens easily. And you're hit with a waft of stench. Um, it smells awful. Uh, make more awful than last time or same as last time? Much worse. Make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> oh, no. What is my con modifier? Because I always forget. Plus two. Ten total. Okay. Um, the stench will wash over the three of you, so all all three of you will make this particular roll. Okay. That is an 11. 11? Okay. So all three of you kind of have this wave pass over you. Uh, it smells of stench and decay and uh, uh, sort of acid and uh, and uh, grime and all that at once. Um, Medric and Annie, you both take one point of poison damage. Silas, you end up kind of gagging a little bit and it is overwhelming because the moment you gag, you open up your mouth a little bit and you get it full in on the top. Ah! <laughs> so, but you're aware of the sensation and you're aware of how much it makes you ill and sick, but the the actual gas poison part of that doesn't affect you. It just makes you gag and reel uh, quite considerably. It's dim inside. Um, those of you who have no light or have no way of seeing in the dark are having difficulty. Uh, Silas? Silas is rolling on the ground, screaming about how horrible it tastes. Yeah. So I guess the fart wouldn't be that bad by comparison. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I put my, my goggles on. Okay. As you kind of let the air flow out a little bit and it, and it thins, the, the, the smell, and in your case, Silas, the taste, is not unlike uh, over-rotten uh, meat combined with uh, decay and combined with, like I said, a sort of whiff of acid on the edge of it all. And you pull on your goggles. Uh, you notice that Medric beside you glows his, his slight <clears throat> amount. Uh, even though he's trying to kind of probably use his hammer to keep himself from vomiting. Um, and Silas, I think you can see in the dark. Is that correct? He can see it. Well, he's got dark vision, but he can also see in absolute darkness, but right. not uh, uh, dim light. He has to use his dark vision. Normal light or darkness, he gets to see perfectly. Okay, <laughs> It's weird. So as you're making that transition in from the outside door to the inside, it's one of those cases of uh, you have to blink a little bit before you can see as your eyes uh, adjust a little bit. Medric, I don't think you can see in the dark, but you glow a little bit. Uh, don't I have like dark got, vision 60 feet yeah. or something? Do you have dark? Okay. All right. Yeah, he's an orc. covered. I wasn't yeah. sure. Half orc. But like, I know it's like the glowing eyes from like level six does mm. something, 
I yeah, I think it acts like a candle or torch, I think, for, for other people as well, which actually makes it harder for Annie to see to a certain degree if she's standing too close to you. Because it's kind of like standing, you know, standing in front of the light bulb. You can't see a damn thing beyond the <laughs> light bulb. Um, so I imagine Annie kind of slinks a little bit to the side. Um, but the, the, uh, there is no light inside. You can actually smell also a little bit of uh, kind of an acrid smoke as well. Um, which has that, that scent of kind of candles that are burned out or a lantern which is burned dry, um, where it's kind of literally uh, kind of started to corrode the metal or, cor or, or, or singe whatever it was uh, stacked on. And as you make your way in, you start to notice um, the, the sort of uh, traces, trails, if you will, uh, of, uh, of dark uh, across the, the floor. Looks like about a half a dozen or a dozen of them. Uh, and then they start to converge further and further as you go deeper in. Um, you can smell uh, some of the smell coming from the sides. These are the large cement rooms, um, which is actually where uh, you'd seen before that he prepares uh, dead bodies. Uh, and you get a waft that, that perhaps whatever enchantments or whatever he'd been using to try to preserve them from doing that, all of that has gone off as if he hasn't attended them for a while. Um, and you get a bit further deeper in. Do you take a look at the side rooms, or are you going to kind of go further to the back? Because you know he had sort of a study in the back. Yeah, I'll take a look at that one side room that I was in before, like where I asked the lady questions about the vase. Okay. Is she still um, there? No, that body's long been, been disposed of. There is a okay. couple of, of fresh bodies, though. Um, it looks as though there was he was had some work he was in the process of doing, um, they look like they're quite decayed um, and uh, kind of s propped up on slabs. You can see in the back of the room, there's also um, some pine boxes that they were going to be buried in. Okay. So they're in the process of being prepared. Um, doesn't look doesn't look familiar. Uh, one of them looks okay. like a half elf. One of them looks like uh, possibly a half orc. But they've been they actually Medric make a medicine check. Medicine. That's a plus five, I believe. Yeah. Twenty-one total. Twenty-one. Um, it actually is eerily familiar to you in particular, where you had sailed on boats um, for quite a while during your military career. Uh, but they have that bloated look of people who've been pulled out of the water. Yeah. Uh, look like they were. They may have been bodies that floated onto the shore after some of the the nastiness that went by or some of the ships that were, were attacked out to sea. Um, they don't, they look like they had drowned. Um, it smell worse than any other body. I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's hard to do a, a judgment of, of, of the scale of it, uh, in your professional opinion. Hey, this with experience. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> uh, in, uh, the other thing you notice Medrick is that the bodies have been disturbed. Um, as you see, little little uh, uh, chew marks on different parts of the body, um, but it doesn't look like it's either extensive or deep. But you just you notice that you can't tell necessarily if that was post mortem or if that was partially when they died. Um, okay. They, they're, they're flesh little chew probably... marks, but considering what Silas said, uh, yeah, it looks like the bodies have been disturbed. You might want to check all the side rooms. However, unfortunate that may be for your nose. Mm -hmm. And your tongue. Silas is trying to use prestidigitation to make his saliva taste and smell like oranges. Uh, <laughs> and then he's going to check out side rooms. I yeah. would imagine, too, that every time that, that Silas even kind of starts to utter anything, you just get a whiff of that whole thing against so you. like, magic, 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 magic. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard to keep up with because the, the smell is pretty consistent here. Although it is airing out slightly because the doors are open now. Um, it looks like I have what a cloth if... in front of my face. Yeah, I'm going to say it's... like maybe they were looking for a specific body. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's rough, and when you do look into some of the side rooms, most of the, some of the other rooms are actually closed, and with some trepidation, you might open them, and then a brand new uh, a range of smell comes out uh, as you find uh, what looks like uh, a halfling's body sitting on one of the benches. But you have a bit of a moment where it could be a kid's body, it could be a halfling's body. Um, I'll look a little say, closer. Uh, well, Annie discovered it. Okay. 
but you can certainly I'll, call I'll out. Take a closer look. Okay. With some trepidation, you take a few steps forward and realize brown hair. Sandy's hair was golden. This is not Sandy. But you do have a little bit of a heart start for a moment. It does look to be a, a young uh, female halfling of some kind. This one not drowned. This one looks as though she's got a nasty gash in her throat. Um, looks as though it was a knife cut, in fact. You're not sure who she was or what she suffered, but it looks as though she had been attacked. Maybe this is the normal set of, you know, clients that Marigold had, or it's hard to tell any detail at this point. Yeah, he was up to some stuff, but <laughs> anyway, we'll keep um, looking, I guess. Make a, uh, we'll have Annie make a perception check. Oh, still above a four. It's an <laughs> 11. 11. Um, you're kind of looking over the body, and just as you're turning to leave the room, you realize that the left arm of the halfling is missing. Looks like it's been uh, cut cleanly off, somewhere just above the elbow. As you proceed back, you find rooms similar to these two, um, a variety of, of deaths. Um, Annie, as you're kind of now aware of it, you start to notice that there are little things missing in some of the bodies. Uh, this one's missing a couple of fingers. This other one is missing uh, what looks like uh, the um, the ankle, so cut off below the ankle. Different little things seem to be missing. Nothing consistent, though. As you move back towards the study, who's in the lead? I'm He's assuming it narrow, would still be me. Narrow hallways, so. Medrick, you're still going to take the lead? Yeah. Okay. Because I can light up the room. Or pass through it, whatever. It's true. Um, you haven't heard anything. You haven't seen anything. There's been no movement that you've noticed so far, other than the shadows dancing somewhat in the light of Medrick's glow. Uh, as you turn the corner and kind of look down towards the end of the, the hallway, you can, um, with the dark vision, you can kind of make out the shape as you remember the shape. With the far end, there's a, a small um, stove that's there. Actually, it would be a fairly large stove that's there, uh, a, 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 a desk, which you can see had been piled high with papers that seemed to have been scattered about. But then you see an enormous arm lying just around the corner. You can just see the, the hand of it kind of uh, stretching towards the, the edge of the floor, just kind of visible a little bit slightly around. And one of the fingers starts to curl. Wait, like what, 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 what do you mean by enormous? Like... Uh, Half orc arm, giant arm. Closer to giant. Okay. And you see one of the fingers start to curl. I see. That arm's moving. Dover? No response. Dover? Still no response. I'll keep my distance. Can I move to a better angle where I can get a better view? Not really. It's kind of a narrow hallway that leads to this back room. All right. Shield up and I'll go further to look to get a better look. Okay. You're walking down and Medrick's kind of filling the hallway. Nobody can really see around him. And again, with the glow that he gives off, it kind of, <laughs> the, he's the light bulb moving down the hallway now. Hard to see by. Um, as you approach, you can see now that the room has been tossed and, and uh, everything has been up, upheaved. Here, though, it's mostly papers that have been scattered about. Thin, dark trails lead all around the room, uh, and you can see that even the furniture itself has been, has been uh, broken to the sides and torn up. Uh, the, the hand that you see lying on the floor in front of you continues to kind of move trying to, it looks like, curl the fingers and move ever so slightly forward with each each uh, grasp. Is the arm connected to something else? You can't see from here. You'd have to get fairly close to see because it's, it's a long, thin hallway. And as you get to the end of that hallway and kind of look, you see that the arm itself is not attached to anything. You can see a dark trail behind it. It looks as though it's been, it's been uh, severed uh, perhaps somewhere in the mid-upper arm but it itself seems to be still moving. Uh, it's a very hairy arm. That arm's hairy not attached arm. to anything. 
You can see a bit of cloth, a dark brown cloth kind of attached around it. And it seems to be trying to move. You're not sure exactly what direction. Uh, you proceed into the room. Yeah. Kind of have what to do I recall from the hand. <laughs> what, do I rec what do I recall from what Dover looked like? As you look back or think back on it, it would be about the rise, size and shape for one of his arms. He did have these enormous arms that dragged all the way down to the ground. And while the central core of his body seemed to be that of a dwarf, he stood almost six feet tall, uh, but kind of was almost square in shape. That might be one of Dover's arms. And you kind of step over it, which takes a bit of effort because it's still fairly large. It yeah. reacts slightly, as in you can see its fingers kind of holding up and extending as if trying to hold on to you. I'll reach down and try to pick, like, the forearm part of the arm up. Like, hey, Dover, what the fuck? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> okay. Um, it is very heavy. You'll have to put away your, your weapon, uh, probably put away the shield as well, kind of sling it back so you can get both hands. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, but you are able to heap... What's your strength? I should check. 16. Yeah, it's with some effort. Um, it, you can you can actually pick up the hand, and it kind of twitches as if trying to reach back to whatever is holding it, but it's unable to do so from that angle. Annie and Silas, you're moving up towards this as well. And you see uh, Medric holding on to this, this twitching hand that seems to be trying to reach out. Yeah, Silas will push back past and move into the room. Okay. Uh, once again, you see these sort of crisscrossing trails of of uh, of dark substance across the floor, some of which is now tracked in the uh, uh, papers that were there, uh, kind of gluing them almost to the bottom. Um, you see the 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 rug which is in the center of the room has been uh, pulled partially to the side, revealing the grate, which leads down uh, below. You can take some time to toss the room if you want to even further, or... Mm, take a look around. Take a yeah. quick look. Okay. Investigation checks for those who are doing it. You can assist someone else to give them advantage. Are there particular... Okay. Well, he did I'll pretty well. I'll try to well. find uh, the rest of... So if Here's that's... 22. Okay. Uh, Medric? What are you I was going to say, do? like... Because for speak with dead, the corpse has to have a mouth. So that means if hands we can find the rest of useful. Dover's body, what? Yeah. Hands yeah. are hands particularly sign useful. With... Unless it speaks hands hand sign, sign language. language. <laughs> if we can find the rest of Dover's body, I can probably cast speak with dead and try to find out what, what happened. Yeah. I'll tell my friends that it's this looks like it's Dover's arm, and if we can find the rest of the body, we could probably learn, learn more. Okay. Um, or is as, there a trail of blood, like coming from the arm? Or? Well, as uh, as Annie and Silas look around, um, one of the things you do discover is there does seem to be a trail back from the arm. It was hard to notice at first because there's so many different crisscrossing trails. Um, it's also a little bit weirdly colored, um, although none of you are particularly seeing great color at the moment. Um, Hey, yeah, I do. The light is me. As, as long as I stay far enough away from uh, glowing Ignis priest, uh, I'm fine. Actually, it's true. In the in the complete darkness, you're actually seeing much better. Um, but you can make out that it's it doesn't look to be blood. It's whatever is coming out of Dover's arm, which is more of a greenish yellow hue, um, not blood, which is what you would expect from a severed arm. But you do see there is a trail that seems to lead into the the, the grate in the floor, which is revealed underneath the carpet. Um, looking around, there are notes on a variety of topics here. There's tons of sketches of bone structures and muscle structures and uh, organ placement. Um, there's also uh, different sketches on, on, uh, on uh, sort of multiple creatures combined together. Uh, the shape of a centaur at one point is uh, compared to the shape of a horse and the shape of a person and trying to understand the physiology of both. Um, you see the, the, the structure of, a, of what looks like uh, an emu 
uh, strangely enough. But instead of where the head would normally be, there does seem to be the, the, a sort of round skull that looks more like a halfling skull, um, kind of with question marks and different notes and notations and very complicated language. Um, there's plenty of, of, of formulas uh, that seem to be suggesting some sort of uh, combination of, of fluids and liquids and, and, uh, and powders to do what you're not certain. Um, many of the pages seem to be torn. There's entire books which seem to be ravaged and parts just entirely removed from them. Um, from what you gather, this was once an orderly library, perhaps of the thoughts and, and uh, considerations of one Dr. Marigold. You recognize his handwriting from seeing it before, but something has been uh, uh, looked for here, and whatever that was that was looked for seems to be thoroughly taken. Um, one of the things that you notice, uh, uh, Silas, is that with the arm still moving, there is actually, a, if you will, an active trail of goo that's behind it. And it still seems to be wet, unlike most of the trails of dark, which you realize are probably trails of dark blood. Do the other trails of dark blood lead anywhere in particular? It looks more like they're scattered about the room. Um, kind of crisscrossing. Um, you look at them, and, and actually with that investigation role, you kind of determine that at first you're thinking maybe it's one thing running around or a couple, but no. To make this much, it had to have been dozens of things running around. You also notice that the trails aren't uniform. Some have small shapes that are similar to the, the metallic claw you saw on the bottom of the metallic rat. Others, though, have two fingers, or two toes, I should say, or uh, one of them has a different arrangement of toes, like different creatures. Um, the, uh, the other thing you realize is that the walls are solid uh, brick and concrete. And while there are some scratching, uh, scratchings at them, um, there are no holes in the walls, almost as though whatever uh, was uh, able to carve through the doors couldn't carve through this space. I mean, can't start to wonder whether this wall was treated for that purpose. Mm. The grate that's in the floor, mm -hmm. is it big, uh, are the holes in it big enough for one of these to have gone through it? Um, not as it is. As you look closer to the, the grate, though, you do realize that it's off kilter a little bit. And there is enough space where it's off kilter that something like about that size could have squeezed through. If these things can squeeze, you start to think a little bit about how these are metal creatures and can they squeeze and should they squeeze and does that make any sense? And you're not really sure of the result. Oh, and you, and you said the trail of blood from the arm is re like, is going towards the gate, the grate. Yes. The fuck. So the rest yeah, of the body uh is in the grate. It's probably under there, but what's coming out of the arm is not any form of blood I've seen before. If it, it lungs be... it over, I might be able to communicate with its spirit and try to find out what happened. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks, it looks like our best bet is going through the grate, I guess. I hope, they, I hope it doesn't smell as bad down there as it does up here. I'm sure yeah, you agree with this. It's probably no worse than uh, the sewer system was. Yeah. That was pretty horrible. Hey, maybe that's how he gets to the sewers. That's a possibility. Down we go. Ooh. Yeah. Let's All see right. if we can get this open. You easily pull it's back. Already the, so I can just thick. Well, you already pick, pull back the uh, thick uh, carpet that was covering over it. That that seems to be normally what's what's protecting it from being seen. Uh, and the grate is heavy, um, but you find that it is hinged, and there is actually a. Uh, uh, after looking around a little while, you find uh, a lever. Essentially, um, it takes you a moment to kind of figure it out because it's too heavy. You think for you to lift or any one of you to lift all that well. But then you realize that there's actually a, a, a lever system here uh, at work um, using a, a cable across the room. And so by putting some pressure on the cable, it starts to winch that up and to its a straight position. You see that there is, uh, in fact, stairs below, which is not what you expect from a sewer grate. 
I'll go uh, down the stairs. I can go first if you want. Yeah, sure. Because uh, I can see uh, better in the darkness. Yeah. Um, I'll get my shield up and. I will and also head get on my down. shield up and hammer back out. Because I'm assuming I've like let go of the high five with the handle that I had going on. Um, are you dropping Dolver's arm? Because you can't carry both; it's too heavy. Yeah, I mean, I can, I'm assuming I can just follow the blood trail. Okay, so where do you put the arm? I'll put it near where I found it. Okay, you set the arm back down. Uh, it once again seems to try to be scrambling towards uh, something. You're not sure what, but it is. It is once again moving. What's it scrambling towards? I mean, it's so, moving so slowly, it's really hard to tell. I'll move it was towards the direction that it's scrambling. Hey, guys, hold up. I think it's reaching for something. Yeah, well, was it trying to get out into the hallway? I mean, it was halfway around the, the, the corner, or halfway, in, I guess, in front of the corner. And when you set it down again, it does seem to try, try to seem to... to pull towards the hallway you came up. All right, I'll bring it towards where it's scrambling. Like, I'll bring it, like, out of the 12 feet, then put it down. Okay. Where does it want to go now? Well, that will bring it out of the hallway into sort of the common space. You okay. set it back down, and it seems to turn towards the front doors. I'll bring it towards the front doors, like another 12 feet or however many feet is towards the front door. Okay. Each time you put it down, it seems to be crawling towards the front doors. So you can make a... Let's make an insight check. <laughs> so you're doing an insight check... Inside. On a severed arm to, to figure out, this kind of makes sense to me, I guess. Oh, this is a plus nine now. Fuck you. Yeah. Wow, 12. <laughs> I mean, plus nine, so that definitely helps. Yeah. Uh, you kind of pick it up and set it down a few times. It's getting a little heavy to, to keep doing that every time. Um, but you quickly realize it's it's crawling towards the front door. It's trying to get out. Out of the Out of the warehouse? Yeah. That's the direction it keeps consistently going towards. Okay. But we probably don't want to release that no. out into the town. No, we don't. Um, I'll just like leave it there and... Like maybe put it inside one of the rooms and close yeah. the door for now. Dover? Uh, quarter Dover? We'll I mean, maybe, right it, maybe it's... Maybe the arm can sense its way back to its body, but I I think the sewer might that, be our best That seems best like a chaotic right way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, pe people are going to see us, and there's going to yeah. be drama. Dover, I uh, we'll find your bus, there. and we'll find the rest of your body, okay? Just stay put. Stay put. The arm does not no. seem to acknowledge okay. your, your comforting words. Yeah, I didn't expect it to, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was Hopefully tempted to have it kind of go, yep. <laughs> but, but no. <laughs> <Or> <laughs> but in this particular case, it doesn't really make much sense for it to do that. Um, I... Yeah, I'll reach my friends if and put go it in the sewers. Room, because... can... hmm? In a room, I think I'm going to try to tie it to something. All right. Do you want to keep yeah. so, like... open a door? Though. Uh, there are basically six chambers down here so, or, so you can choose any one of them some That's of them do close chamber. there's no locks on these doors uh, but if you want to Could try to put... <laughs> yeah, separate I... can it reach the doorknob is there any furniture we could push in front of a door i mean in in uh inside those chambers there are uh Effectively, they'd be wooden gurneys, which is what they, they use to move the bodies around on. You could wheel one of those out, potentially, and plop it in front of a door. Um, you can take some of the broken furniture from the... trying to the... contain the hat, the, the hand. <laughs> yeah. We lock it in a room and we stuff something against the door. Okay. Um, let's, sure. have, uh, let's have uh, someone make an appropriate role. Who wants to lead this? And we'll just call it with advantage for someone else helping. Make it simple. I, I can push something heavy in front of the door, definitely. Okay. What what would your what uh, would you use Athletics. <laughs> okay. That I can help with sleight of hand to make sure that it's jammed 
to be on the doorknob. Okay. All right. I'll make that with Either advantage. Either of hand or something like that. Sure. Uh, why don't you go ahead and make a roll then, Annie, on the, the sleight of hand to kind of angle this properly. Um, was that your 15 uh, metric for the athletics roll? Or? Yeah, 15 or 17. Because okay. if I have advantage, it's 17. If not, it's, yep. six, it's 15. 23. 23? Okay. You're Eight. fairly confident that the way that you've angled this plus the you've chose one of the one of the ones that seems to have a bad wheel so it doesn't roll quite as quite as easily and sort of Screech. angle that and put it all against that. You're pretty sure that this is going to hold. Pretty sure. I mean, it's not locked, but it's it's wedged in there pretty tight. So that arm is not going anywhere. Good. Until later, where we found his body. And Marigold, to where he attached it to his body. Um, one thing that I should have mentioned earlier that you would be aware of oh. is that there are um, drains in each of those rooms. They're very, very small, but they would need to drain the liquids out somewhere. So that's what they have. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are quite small uh, in the sort of the center of the rooms. Too small, in fact, for the arm to probably even fit through. I'm assuming the drains go into the sewers. They go down. So it's a pretty good bet. Okay. Uh, it also makes you kind of wonder what else goes into the sewers, but that's, that's why they glow green. Poop. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, conveniently, when the water washes in at high tide, it cleans out the sewers and drags all that out to sea. That's probably safe. There's no OSHA no standards here. So, are you heading down the stairs then? Yep. Yep. Silas I'll follow Silas because I guess you can see better. And it really is single file. Um, it is a remarkably wide space. And you kind of imagine that if it wasn't this wide when they started, then they probably made it bigger because if Dolver was meant to pass through here, it would have to be big enough for him. Uh, even then you imagine that if you kind of imagine that if Dolver was passing through, it would still be a tight squeeze. Hey, Marta's here. <laughs> Not particularly. Um, I'm just reusing that old map because you guys went in another direction that I didn't quite have prepared. Uh, and in fact, I might even move you to another map, which has think a close-up view. Eh, it's pretty much the same. But Mary Gold's office is right there. As you proceed down, um, it becomes very clear and in fact partially familiar spot once again <clears throat> um, as you recognize the sewers that you were in before. Not far from here actually is the uh, the hidden space that you'd found which had a, an opening that directly uh, led you into where you found Regalesta. Although that opening itself was, uh, was crushed uh, from before. Uh, not much actually remains in there. Um, you actually come out, I see you guys have moved yourselves, but you actually come out towards the stairs. <laughs> um, right there. I'll just quickly drag you guys. No, I think there. we were just still there from last time we yeah, were on this. Yeah, I, I moved myself there to the I stairs. I thought I saw one I move, so. <laughs> I, was moving, I was moving like here and here and here and it's like <laughs> hey marta <laughs> yeah, marta's not actually there you know, yeah her off the off the page but you do have some some are you uh, going some to show the viewers the the map <laughs> uh yes i probably should change the screen here so there we go um as uh we're kind of in uh whoops in this area roughly i'll try to zoom in I do There's remember a weird that bug there was Mary Gold's workshop. So you were actually directly. I don't remember the important before. things in my life, but this I do remember. <laughs> uh, and uh, um, you do remember that yes, not far from you actually was a, a place that was labeled specifically and, and locked up. That was Marigold's place. And from where you are standing now, and the the dim glow of the green light below, which kind of ironically uh, shifts uh, Silas into a a less uh, efficient uh, viewing mode, uh, you can see now that the uh, the doorway that was barred and uh, protected is actually sitting ajar. Looks like it's oh, been shit. bashed inward, and you can see the trail of green goo now tracing in towards that area. 
I've revealed it there, but just present, pretend you haven't seen that yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Silas will uh, actually start to rush forward. I'll follow. Okay. Uh, um, start across. Okay. The bridge is a little bit uh, uh, um, weak. Um, almost as though just Silas crosses. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's going to give way. It just looks like it's been pounded on recently. Uh, as though something very heavy uh, uh, ran across at a very high speed. And in no, fact, as you... Very heavy. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. Uh, as you stand there, Silas, and actually look in, you can look beyond the door, which is right there, and you see on the far end, the end of the trail, which continues along this whole area, uh, as you see uh, what looks to be Dolver lying on the slab, one arm missing, and then this essence just sort of dripping out of him uh well i say the rest of over here uh silas will move a bit slower just checking like the doors on either side before he moves farther so we don't get jumped okay as you're moving through and taking a look left and right it becomes apparent that this is not um or i don't know what it is necessarily it is or not but on the sides, what you actually see are barred doors. Um, they're, they're rather just doors of bars, uh, much like a jail cell. Uh, and you see cells on either side. Um, looks like they have dilapidated furniture, which has long fallen down inside. Um, one or two of them have uh, what looks like bandages kind of left behind. Some of them have straw in them. You actually see off to the right-hand side as you're passing uh, one... Uh, what looks like an old bed uh, onto which is some uh, what looks like a body shape but shrouded in bandages uh, that is strapped down to the surface. All the doors appear to be closed and uh, and if you try any of them they seem to be locked as well. Um, but no sign of any other people. And I don't have an icon for Dover right here but he is on lying on this slab. So you can see the... There's a, yeah, there's a body on there. Um, you can see that the, the that uh, Dover is moving slightly, as if responding to the sound of people coming nearby. He's still bleeding heavily out of the out of the severed arm, and otherwise not really moving. Um, and you can hear his heavy breathing as you get closer. Uh, you can see uh, dozens of wounds across his body as uh, more and more of this yellowish green stuff seems to have been pumped out but now is dry on the surface, almost as though he's running out of it. Uh, Silas, as soon as he hears that, will uh, cast a uh, healing word. Um, I don't think he's going to be helped by that. <laughs> Silas is going to try. Okay. Okay. Uh, dice, more dice on this. Plus three, so that would be five hit points if he heals like a normal okay. thing. As you express the, uh, the, the spell and you feel the, the, the energy expelled, uh, you look over and see that the body is unchanged. Dover. Mm. The, head kind of, the head kind of lolls over to you. The large eye is swollen shut. The smaller eye is just peering open and it spins chaotically in its spot as if trying to focus until finally locking eyes on you. There's a lurch for the entire body as he tries to tries to sit up, but seems unable to, perhaps due to the wounds or or, or tiredness or what. Uh, it, the other it's arm. Okay. Um, yep. It, it's Medrick, and my friend Silas and Annie were friends of Doctor Marigold. What happened here? Can you talk? And as you remember before, mm. Dover, when he opens his mouth, yeah. can do nothing but utter grunts. And, and whines and wheezes. There's a bit of an extra burble as well as clearly whatever internal organs he has have been punctured and filled with this green goo. Uh, the, the sound is plaintive and desperate and sad. Um, he tries to gesture with the other big hand, but it seems to be almost too heavy for him to lift as he kind of moves it and then slaps himself on the stomach. Silas will speak into his mind and say, what happened, Dolver? Ooh, Where nice. is Dr. Marigold? Um, the, the head kind of lolls over and the eye once more twists and focuses until it finds, uh, finds Silas. 
um, behind the pleading eye, you hear still crude, still almost as though it's weighed under by the force of, of, uh, of a mountainside. Were taken, could not defend. Too many. I die soon. These, and he slaps his stomach once more, and you hear something um, uh, ring kind of almost from the slap. And you see there's a, a, a bulging pocket on the outside of this. It's sort of a waistcoat, but it's, it's sort of distended and, and stitched together in multiple different ways. Do you take a look, or do you just let it be? I'm assuming only Silas is hearing the, res the response right now. Yes. Uh, yeah, he's a... I think there's something in there, or in him, I'm not sure. Uh, while, uh, while Annie checks that out, uh, he'll just ask, where did they go? Where are they taken? Uh, and he'll keep an eye on Annie and the pocket in case something explodes or something. Okay, sorry, I didn't hear, if you did say something, Marie, I didn't hear it, so... I, I, I just said, yeah, I'll check it out. Okay, all right. Um, as you, you peer, and it does look like it's a pocket uh, that's kind of been folded over. It's got a, 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 a very large, uh, probably made from bone button that's on the outside. And as you approach the, the pocket, you see the pocket wriggle somewhat. Okay. <laughs> very carefully uh, undo the, the, the one button that's on it. Uh, in your head, you hear the response, Silas, came from everywhere. Holes. Can't think tired. Dying. Save him, please. And as you open up the pouch uh, on the pocket, uh, something falls out. And you see a glint of red as the one remaining red eye in this semi-crushed uh, uh, mechanical rat uh, gleams suddenly in the, in the bright light or in the dark light of this room. Uh, and let's see. Not knowing that works. Silas is talking to Dover, I'll just ask, w would it help if we brought you your other arm? Just... Nod yes, if yes. I don't think an 11 hits Annie. No. As this, this one eye uh, emits this beam of, of uh, red light that, cr that narrowly misses you and kind of streaks across part of the ceiling. Um, Damn. What did you say? Uh, 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 what did you say to him, Medrick? Because uh, not knowing that Silas is actually talking inside his mind, I'll ask, would it help if we brought your other arm back? Just nod yes, if yes. Um, the eye once again kind of spins and focuses on you. You get the impression that he's having a hard time maintaining connection to whatever is being done around him uh, and kind of focuses now entirely on you. Uh, and then there's, uh, make an insight check at disadvantage as you try to read his expression. Um Inside this thing or sure. reorients itself at your feet, uh, uh, Annie, and starts to skitter away. I, I, I would start at it. Okay. As it skitters away. Inside, disadvantage. Natural 19. That's it. Oh, fuck's sakes. Of course, the disadvantage has to be a 1, so a 10 total. The strange mutated form of Dolver is almost impossible to read at the best of times. And now with him only having a, a marginal amount of control over his own facial features, he seems inscrutable. Damn. Uh, that is an eight. And because it's one of Esmundus. Uh, one of Esmundus. Uh, and yes. I. How many darts do I have? I would like to uh, do, 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 do. I just want to remember what a thing does, if that's the best or uh, 
Okay, so I'll, I'll reduce its speed by 10 feet. 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, as the little darts, uh, uh, you whip the little dart out at it, it kind of catches in a kink on the side of it. And you see the, the, the little uh, uh, sprouting as the back of the dart explodes with these thorns you're familiar with. And that seems to be grinding its gears. Um, it seems to be uh, trying to... Actually, let me see how much movement it has left. And it still has some movement left and is trying to kind of drag itself across the floor. You can also see that, that uh, at least one of its limbs was also crushed. Um, judging just kind of briefly from it, you can also you can kind of make out the shape of Dover's hand as he quite literally had grabbed this thing, crushed it in his hand, and then shoved it into a pocket to hold on to it. Uh, it makes you wonder why he decided to hold on to it instead of destroy it if he was powerful enough to do so. As you see, it's starting to pull away. Um, try to catch it. Yeah, Silas is going to try and mage hand it off the ground. Uh, okay. It's easy for, for Annie to get in front of it because your speed is far more than it's right now as it literally is trying to drag itself. And you also see that there's a little bit of, of a dark trail behind it. Uh, it seems as though it sort of is bleeding, whatever that passes for, uh, kind of, that it could be followed. Uh, and when you activate the mage hand, it's, it's, uh, what is this? Is there a strength rating for the mage hand? It can carry up to 10 pounds. So that would be a strength of one, I think. <laughs> um, um, I've never met a rat that was more than 10 pounds, to be honest. Like, these ones are solid metal, though, uh, and magical. I'll say that it, it's mm -hmm. holding it kind of in place at the moment, but it is struggling against it. Um, and actually, at that point, it will... Um, seeing the one enemy in front of it, it'll fire off a beam towards Annie. Oh, that's a crit hit. Ooh. As the as the oh. beam, as you're kind of trying to keep in front of it, Annie, and the beam kind of catches you solidly in the chest. Uh, that is 11 points of, what do they call that? Fire damage. As it sort of, uh, you feel uh, this, this nasty burn in your chest. I will uncanny dodge. Good idea gonna leap off to the side so it kind of Damage instead of hitting instead of hitting you straight in the chest it kind of scrapes a, a, a nasty trail along your arm and then cuts along some of the the the, the stone and, and brick so that would be uh five damage five fire instead as Not it's, uh, is watching this happen and it's like what the fuck is going on <laughs> um and stick it in a box or something I have a bag on me. I'm going to try to, like, plop my bag on top of it. Okay. Uh, let's call this a, um, a athletics check with advantage, because it's basically being held. But it's still wriggling and, and trying to twist around. Oh, it's already being held? Can I grab it then? Well, yeah, you like, can grab it if you want to. It's being held by the mage hand, but it is struggling against the mage hand. Yeah. I thought that it was still on the floor. I didn't realize it was already somewhat I think, crap, so I think I'm you meant to pick to it up. It. I think you meant to pick it up, right, uh, Silas? Uh, I wanted to pick it up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's up off the ground right now, kind of spinning its feet, but trying to wriggle away. So you want to just grab it? Smash its eyes. Don't break it. I think we can follow it back. So are you stabbing at it then? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to grab it. Okay, all right. That will be that will be a, a contested uh, athletics check, although it's at disadvantage. Um. Uh, Seventeen. Metal dive for the win. Uh, that's Eight. a thirteen from it. So yeah, although it's wriggling and twisting in your hands, you do have a hold of it. Do not stare deeply um, into its eye. I am fact, going to... It will fire again, although at disadvantage. Pocket, uh, open pocket. 12, 12 misses, I think. Misses. Yeah. So the beam kind of goes and misses everybody. shoots up, and a little bit, a little bit of rock falls from the ceiling where it carves out a, a, a spot. I'm, I hope that somebody is opening the pocket. <laughs> 
Which bucket? Like a uh, Dover's bucket? Pat, uh, you're muted. muted uh... That it just came out of. Yeah, I'm just trying to think if I had, I don't think I have a bag or anything to chuck it in, but I mean, we can wrap it up in the pocket and then just tear the pocket off. Yeah. Or cut the pocket free. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Silas okay. will hold the thing open so you can stuff hold it in. Hold the pocket there. open. Shove yeah. it in. You've already got a hold of it. Uh, it managed to go back in the pocket, probably quickly closing that, that uh, bone clasp on the outside. Um, and you have pocketed it once more. You look over at Dover, who didn't react when you brought this back over to his pocket. Oh, and you no. notice now a somewhat glassy look in that one eye that had been moving. It does not seem to focus on anything. Silas will say into his head, rest well, we'll find him. And with that, I think I'm going to call Maybe tonight's episode to a close. You. Now that you have, um, didn't mean to, to speak over the Everflame comment there. Yeah. <laughs> but we do have a time crunch. So now you have a, a pocket full of mechanical rat, an idea about how it can be useful to help find your friends. Now I can make rat chucks. <laughs> and on that note, I want to get the hell out of here. Uh, we will be playing once again in December. We get two more weeks and then we're back in December, the something or other. I got to check the date here. It's on the thing. Fifth. Thank you very much. You can find this, uh, live on those every other weeks at uh, twitch.tv slash ENCIF one. You can find this and all previous episodes also on youtube.com slash ENCIF one. Look for the uh, campaign called The Great Confusion or Legends of, Dredgen, bleh, Legends of the Drowned <laughs> Isles Campaign 2. Easy for you to say, right? Uh, <laughs> you can also join Watchers of the Drowned Isles if you want on Facebook. Uh, we post uh, summaries of previous episodes there as well as occasionally drop in to chat or you can just ask questions and figure out what the hell we know. Uh, I want to thank my players for joining me in this particular session. I think I've got just enough time to do that. Uh, so once again, I uh, hope you've had some fun in this, uh, this, the, the one thing that I hadn't decided to re 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 reread for today, but thankfully had plotted for a little bit before, uh, it's, it's, it's D and D it's gaming folks. You never know what it's going to be. Uh, so players again, are unpredictable creatures. <laughs> Absolutely. And with that, I will see you guys soon. Let's end the, end the session.